Hey, peace and love, peace and love. This is your brother Garfield, Brother Garfield Podcast. Today, we're going to put this to rest. The Putin, black icon, fake AI voice, black Hebrew Israelites exposed. Let me say this, man. Hold on a second. Let me edit. Let me edit this. Let me put black Hebrew Israelites exposed. Let me put that in. Black Hebrew uh, he, let's put Hebrew Israelites. Hebrew Israelites exposed. Kemet. Kemet. Egyptomania is it replacement Christianity? And that's something that we need to actually speak about as an as an adult. We need to get into that. Oh, let me call um biblical DNA. Oh man, I gotta change the whole topic. I gotta change the whole topic. But let me play this and let me get biblical DNA in here. I gotta change the topic. I forgot I got biblical DNA coming on. Um, the twenty three and me exposed fake E one B one A. We gotta expose all of that. So let me text him right now. But let me play this video. Just to start the show to give me some time. But take a look at this family. This is just ridiculous at this point. Look at what these Hebrew Israelites are doing. It's it's so sad on so many levels. Like, what do what do we do? What do we do with these guys? And let me do this also. Let me put um you put a fair use one and over it. Hold on. Oh, we need it over it, not under it. We need it over it. Fear Use Warning. Peace and love to Ngozi in the building and everybody who supports this channel. Fear Use Warning. I want to say peace and love to everybody that supports this channel. It's appreciated. All right? We're going to get it in. All right. So here we go. Let me take myself off. And let's listen to this craziness. Tell me, it's hard. Ladies and gentlemen, people of Russia, today we stand on the precipice of a monumental revelation, a moment that redefines not only our understanding of history, but also the path forward for our great nation. In an extraordinary discovery hidden beneath centuries of lore and legend, we have opened what can only be described as the oldest vault known to man. What we found within its ancient confines challenges the very fabric of our beliefs and heralds a new dawn for our contemporaries. Within this vault, we discovered figures of bi biblical proportions, characters that many have read about, debated, and revered. These figures, preserved against the sands of time, reveal a truth that is as profound as it is transformative. They are all black. This revelation, this undeniable truth, stands before us not as a contradiction to our faith, but as a testament to the diversity and unity that faith embodies. As your president, I see this moment not as a challenge to our beliefs, but as an opportunity to embrace a wider, more inclusive understanding of our history and spirituality. Russia, in its rich tapestry of cultures, traditions, and people, is uniquely positioned to lead the world into this new era of understanding and acceptance. From this day forward, let us proclaim our nation under the guidance of Black Jesus, a figure who represents not just the cornerstone of Christian faith, but also a symbol of the universal values of love, compassion, and brotherhood. This Black Jesus, whose likeness and history have been unveiled from the oldest vault, is a message to us all that divinity knows no color, that spiritual truth transcends race, and that our common humanity binds us more tightly than our differences divide. Let this discovery remind us that history is not just the story of those who wield power, 
and it would also be of those whose contributions have been overlooked or forgotten. All right, so there's a little more to that, but I, I think y'all get it. And, uh, you know, there was a, another video, and I'm going to show you where that particular speech came from. And just uh... For those who don't know, it was a generated AI voice of Putin, but the guy who is translating is mistranslating and making up his own translations. And this has gone viral. This is craziness. Black Hebrew Israelites, come on. We better than this. It's crazy. Told his entire nation that they now serve Black Jesus. Stop what you're doing. Download this video and share it on every social media site you can find. Because this shit just got crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, people of Russia, today we stand on the precipice of a monumental revolution, a moment that redefines Todos not only our understanding of history, but also the path forward for our great nation. In an extraordinary discovery hidden beneath centuries of lore and legend, we have opened what can only be described as the oldest vault known to man. What we found within its ancient confines challenges the very fabric of our beliefs and heralds a new dawn for our country. Within this vault, we discovered figures of bi biblical proportions, characters that many have read about, debated, and revered. These figures, preserved against the sands of time, reveal a truth that is as profound as it is transformative. They are all black. This revelation, this undeniable truth, stands before us not as a contradiction to our faith, but as a testament to the diversity and unity that faith embodies. As your president, I see this moment not as a challenge to our beliefs, but as an opportunity to embrace a wider, more inclusive understanding of our history and spirituality. Russia, in its rich tapestry of cultures, traditions, and people, is uniquely positioned to lead the world into this new era of understanding and acceptance. From this day forward, let us proclaim our nation under the guidance of Black Jesus. Now, this is supposed to be the same speech, but obviously he has a different tie on. He has on a different. Hey, let me let me say this to everybody that's watching. You know, one West teaches that Africans are Hamites. How are you trusting a Hamite to translate Russian for you? The irony. You are trusting the Hamite. So some Hamite is translating Russian for you and you trust it. Because you trust the Hamite. The irony. Oh, man. different jacket and a different background, different location, right? Now, I don't know if you all can see this and I and I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it with you, but in the in a in the lower left corner of this particular video, there's this golden arch or this golden triangle. Can y'all see that in the lower left corner? If y'all can see that, give me a one. If you can't see it, give me a two. There's there's a, a, a golden triangle in the lower left. Why is that important? That's because you can identify where they got this video from. Now, let me show you this one. All right, here's the video where they stole it from. Putin makes no mention of Ukraine war in New Year's Eve speech. See the same little golden triangle right there in the background? Same tie, right? В ние времена встречи Нового года это и светлые надежды, искреннее желание порадовать близких. Наступающий 2024 объявлен в нашей стране годом семьи. 
а настоящая большая семья – это, безусловно, та, где растут дети, где царят внимание, душевная теплота и забота о родителях. So I don't need to go any further. So this is the speech, the speech video, right? Right here on the right side. This is the one that they shared that supposedly he was talking about black Jesus. That's on the right, the little gold thing right there. And here's the original video that I just showed you right here, the little gold triangle thing uh, building on the left, right? Same thing, same speech. It's a lie. It's a fake. It's not even AI. It, initially, this particular video, because it was sort of grainy, it sort of looked like it was an AI thing, right? But it's not even AI. It just, it's just a bad recording, right? Now, does this negate the fact that we, the Israelites, know it doesn't negate that fact, but they want to use this against us, right? I told you, personally, I can't tell you who did it. I think it's a camp. Because they've been doing this since I've, I've I've been awakened, they do this this type of foolishness, and it hurts the awakening, right? Now, if it's not the camps, then it's somebody like those uh, people that hang over there, you know, with the urban apologists, you know, the white boys that be over there, you know, whatever. So now he's trying to blame Abuyo. Oh man, that's crazy. But yeah, I'm going to show this other video now to show the 10 oldest images of Jesus. 10 oldest images. All right. Hey, give me a second, brother. I'm going to hit you back in like 45 to 90 minutes. I'm live on a Zoom. All right. I'm going to hit you back. All right, cool. All right. All right. So I'm going to um play this video and I want you all to check it out. All right. Just five minutes. Yo, twins at the, the end of the world ministries got to clear it up. And I, I, we don't have to agree with them. It's just facts. Check this out now. These are the top 10 oldest images of Jesus in the world. Number 10. The sarcophagus of Adelphia. 340 AD. The sarcophagus of Adelphia, now in the museum in Syracuse, Sicily, was found in the rotunda of Adelphia inside the catacombs of San Giovanni. It has three layers of depictions of Bible scenes. On the top, Adam and Eve, the denial of Peter with the cockerel, Jesus healing bleeding woman, Moses receiving the tablets on the right are the scenes depicting abraham and isaac christ healing the blind the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves raising the son of the widow of nine and last the lower register shows shadrach masak and abingo refusing pagan worship the miracle at cana of turning water into wine the Adoration of the Magi, Adam and Eve and the Serpent of the Tree of Knowledge, and finally, Jesus entering Jerusalem on a donkey. Now, some of you right now might be thinking that this is number 10. Are you telling me you have nine more that predate 340 AD? And yes, I do. Which brings us to the next one. The Catacombs of Kamadilla, dated to around 325 AD. Here we have our first depiction of Jesus with the Alpha and Omega. It's also one of the first of a bearded Jesus. As you will see later in the video, the earliest depictions of Jesus, he's beardless. He looks a lot younger. In this one right here, we have the prototypical bearded Jesus that will stay as the norm for the time going forward up until right now. The catacombs of Kamadilla were used for burials until the 6th century. Later, Christian underground cemeteries transformed into a place of worship of martyrdom. Restoration of a basilica underground were made by several popes until the 9th century. A sign that the catacombs were still, at that time, a place of pilgrimage 
for devout Christians. Number eight, the catacombs of Marcellinus and Peter. Now I had this one dated to 315 AD. Some have it later. They all have them in the fourth century. Peter and Marcellinus died in the year 304 AD. And as far as we know, the catacombs were built not long after. This is one of the biggest catacombs of the ancient Christian world. There is about 20,000 skeletons discovered in these catacombs. Some of the images in here are not just Christian either. We have a depiction of Orpheus holding the lyre. We also have a giant fresco of different Bible scenes. The most iconic of all is the picture of Jesus putting his hand out to Mary. This is mostly what these ancient depictions of Jesus look like. Number seven, Henton St. Mary Mosaic. I had this one dated to 305 AD. It appears to be a portrait bust of Jesus as a central motif, similar to the Orpheus style mosaics with animals around him, his face in the middle, interpreting a Christian context representing good defeating evil, flanking as two rectangular panels featuring dogs hunting deer. A reader will read on in the book for two reasons, either because they want to know what happens next or they can. The central circle surrounds a portrait bust of a man with a Cairo behind his head, which means Christ, flanked with two pomegranates next to his head, a symbol of Messiah. Some people think this is Constantine. However, most people do believe this is probably a depiction of Jesus because of the toga. Number six, the catacomb of Priscilla, 275 AD. We have figures of the Madonna and the child, prophet Isaiah, and a depiction of the Annunciation is also shown. Mary with Jesus on her lap. The catacomb of Priscilla is found inside of a quarry, which was used for Christian burials from the late second century all the way through the fourth century. This catacomb is named after Manius Glabrio, his wife Priscilla. He is said to have became a Christian and was killed on the orders of the mission. The wall paintings inside of the catacomb include early Christian symbols and the good shepherd depicting feeding his lambs with a crowing cock on his right and left hand. Number five, the epitaph of Severa. Here we have a depiction of the three magi adoring the baby Christ in the arms of Mary. The epitaph is from a woman named Severa from the catacomb of Priscilla. The inscription reads, May you live in God. The epitaph is thought to have predated the catacombs and was brought there afterwards. The figure standing on the right looks like to be Joseph pointing to Mary, although some have theorized that it may be the prophet Balaam pointing to the star in Numbers 24, 17. It states, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of all the people of Sheth. Number 4, 235 AD, the Calixtus Catacombs. Here we have a depiction of Jesus being baptized by John. This is a tomb of several popes from the 2nd to 4th century. It's also known as the Crypt of the Popes. And in here, we find many depictions of Jesus, mostly with no beard, holding wands in his hand. Another depiction of him with the lamb around his neck as the good shepherd. Also, we have the famous turning water into wine at Cana. It is the typical early Christian depiction of Jesus with the toga and no beard. Throughout the catacombs, Kairos litter the entire place. Number three, the Dura Europa's Church, 225 AD. This is thought to be by some scholars as the oldest depiction of Jesus. The depictions we have in this church are of Jesus healing the paralytic and of also the Samaritan women at the well. Jesus walking on water with Peter 
we can just barely make out the two bodies on the water and the ship in the distant background. The Good Shepherd, as we've seen in the previous two catacombs, is also found in the church of Dura Europus. There's also many other Jewish depictions of Abraham and David and Isaiah, as well as Jesus, at this location. In the year 256, the town was abandoned after the Persian siege. Can you sense the change in the atmosphere? We're entering a time of increased hostility against people of faith. This is a time when Christians are going to be tested on a moral and physical and psychological and even... Number two, the catacombs of Domitilla, dated to sometime in the second century. From what I've gathered and talking to a few scholars about this, might be the only second century depiction of Jesus that exists and arguably the oldest depiction of Jesus that exists. I don't have an exact date to put on this, so I'm just gonna say second century. But as you can see, the Good Shepherd, once again, this is probably the most common image of Jesus in the earliest days. And number one, the oldest depiction of Jesus in the world is called the Alexamanos Graffiti. And this is a picture of a donkey being crucified with Alexamanos Sabate Theon, which means Alexamanos worships his God. It must be one of someone who knows Alexamanos in Rome who is cracking a joke about his religion. Some people would argue that this is not a depiction of Jesus, but I think it's fair to say there's enough here He's on the crucifixion. He's being worshipped. Whether it's a donkey's head or a man's head, the intent is to portray him as Jesus. Now, we don't have any photographs of Jesus. They're all just depictions. So I don't see a big deal of it being having an animal head or not. It just shows that the artists of what they thought of him. But to get a little conspiratorial on you, there is something interesting about his head being a donkey. We have writings from... Posidonius around 70 BCE, Apollonius Mola around the same time, both from the island of Rhodes, make the claim that, that Antiochus IV, after raiding the temple of Jerusalem, found an idol of a man riding on top of a donkey. Menasius in 200 BCE talks about someone looting the Jerusalem temple and finding a donkey head idol. The book of Zechariah has a messianic prophecy of a man entering Jerusalem on a donkey, which is probably where the gospel writers borrowed from. However, there was a Gnostic document called the birth of Mary in which Zechariah, who is the father of John the Baptist, goes inside of the temple of Jerusalem and he becomes muted because he sees a god with the head of an ass and he can't speak until his son is born because the god muted him so that he would not tell anybody what he saw now why am i telling you all these stories the reason why i'm telling you all these stories is because i think it's possible not saying this is the case guaranteed but it's quite possible that this graffiti artist might have heard some of these stories and might have conflated the idea of a Jewish Messiah and a donkey demon. Tacitus, in the early 2nd century, gives us a history of the Jews in which he tells the story of Moses and the Israelites starving and thirsty in the desert in which they are led by a pack of donkeys to water, in which Tacitus then says that they worship the image of the donkey because of this moment. So for Tacitus to know this information and for the other writers who I mentioned to have this type of mindset or thought of what these stories are, it makes sense that somebody in Rome might know this or hear these stories as well. So with that being said, this is why I have the Alexamanos graffiti as the number one oldest depiction of Jesus in the world and the only remaining image of Jesus of the first century. 
All right, peace and love. I got biblical DNA. I got thunder in the building. And um, 93 jump on. Um, we're going to talk about E1B18, 23 and me exposed. And the reason why I say that, ladies and gentlemen, and by the way, too, to the brothers and sisters, I don't believe anybody's an Edomite by color. And I don't believe I don't believe in Hamites. I was just being sarcastic. Kevin Thomas, you're taking it too serious. But the truth of the matter is you live by a color doctrine. So, of course, the Russian icons that's made 600 years ago going to attract you. But you don't even know the truth behind the, the icons, who drew them, when they drew them, and all that stuff. But, of course, I'm playing this because a lot of people are gullible towards the, the, the Putin fake AI voice by an African who would be an, who would be a Hamite. In your guys, you're quick to believe in that person. That's just the irony of what I'm saying. I was being sarcastic by saying that. So relax. I don't believe in none of that. All right? Um, if anybody wants to jump on, Israelites come in all colors. But you're talking about Edomites. So I'm responding to you. So anyway, what's up, my brother Thunder? It's your show. What's up, man? Lead the way into the conversation. Uh, nah, I'm good. I, I, I ain't got, got nothing on this one, bro. Yeah, I, I got biblical DNA coming on. I got 93, mm -hmm. and I got Mr. E1B1 A himself and Gozi coming on. We're gonna talk about E1B1 A and 23 and Me is perpetrating a fraud, especially on African Americans. I right, before, before I'm, I'm gonna let y'all do your thing. Before, what's up, uh, Gary Barrett? Um, before y'all do, man, I gotta. You brought up Puffy last week, and uh, I was dismissive. And the I week was, before, the week before, the, the week, week before, before, right? Week before, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was dismissive, man. I, I must say, and and I, I don't think I can. I don't believe <laughs> I, can <maintain. laughs> I don't believe I can maintain my stance that I had. I love that. I love that. I love that. I don't believe I, I can. That. That I brother, love that. That brother love is it. looking rough right now. It's looking rough. It's looking bad. It's looking bad. That's all I can say. But yeah, y'all, y'all do your thing. All right. Cool. All right. Anything else you want to touch on before? Or are you good? No, I'm good. Gozi, we waiting for you, brother. And all Gozi, right. my man. All right, biblical DNA in the building. Everybody, this is biblical DNA. I don't know nobody that searches DNA as amateurs as us better than this dude right here. All right. I appreciate well, I got, you. I got, hold on, let me see. Brick, what do you want, Brick? Yeah, I was going to say, what you didn't provide no evidence. You're saying that the Israelites, you're generalizing for one. And you said the Israelites, I, I don't, what, so what are you? argument are you making you're saying the israelites what are they doing you see so why are you complaining about it if you don't know what i'm claiming but you're you're saying that the israelites are fell for that doc what proof do you have of that i don't understand oh, oh have you seen the internet and tiktok and all these hebrew israelites Brother, TikTok, I don't, you go off of tiktok hold on, hold on hold on hold on hold on i have israelite leaders who are quoting that so that so why wouldn't you post that no, 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 no. I'm posting this to clear it up, to say where it comes from. No, no, no. Why, why, why would you, why, why would you post the evidence Rick, Rick, that you Rick, have Rick, of Rick, Israelites Rick, 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 jumping on Rick, that on that Rick, bandwagon? Rick, Rick, no, my brother. Let right. me let me help him out. Oh, so, Brick, no, no, what, no, no. what what we're doing Rick, is assuming that you already showed, know hold that. Hold on, hold on, Thunder. The guy who I showed is an Israelite believer from Tio Ministries, the end of the world ministries. Tio. Those are Israelite guys who profess to believe in the Israelite doctrine. They are the ones that's exposing the Israelites who are following this. Not Garfield. I'm playing the video so that because you won't believe my word more than an Israelite word. If you didn't fall for the AI trick with Putin, more power to you, beloved. But there's a lot of Israelites. I heard an Israelite teaching on the Sabbath just past this Saturday about this. That is true. So if you're saying you want me to, to, to point out every single Israelite that's doing it, I'm not here to do that. I'm doing this to tell you it's foolishness based off of that. Okay, okay, I get that. I understand that. But with the, what you have posted was very, it wasn't any information. That was nothing. That, that I can't jump to conclusions based off of what you just posted. That wouldn't be wise of me. What did I you know post? What I'm saying? So why, I mean, I, what I'm asking is why not when you said on the Sabbath, 
a Israelite leader post. Why why wouldn't you sound take a sound bite of that and post it? No, 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 no. Why no, wouldn't no. you? I mean, no, you no, I can't no, assume no, like you just no, like you said, no, if no, I didn't if I didn't no, buy it. Time out. Time out. Time the F out, bro. It's not your show. Relax. I don't need to. Right. You might need to mute they mic. Yeah, peace and love to him. Hey, what's up, Kyle? Say what you gotta say for you. Yeah, what's going on, man? I'm trying to get into this DNA argument, man. I've been okay, doing good, that. good, good. Biblical DNA, your connection is bad, and we, we can't hear you, beloved. Yeah, there you go. So now I can bring it back up. Biblical DNA. Let's no. The issue is this: when you have 23 and me, right? 23 and me. Let me let me bring it up real quickly. Hold on, hold on. Biblical DNA. Let me just show this real quickly. Let me log in and just show everybody. What happened is everybody in the community, whether they are African American. Or, or, or um, wherever they're from, they choose the side with um, saying that they're connected to ancient Egyptians because of the, um, the E one B one A results from Ramesses the third. So you have you have um, hold on, ancestry overview. Let me see ancestry composition. Let me find this before I share it. Hold on one second, family. Let me just share this on the screen. And they'll show you guys what 23andMe does. Hold on one second. One second. Give I me one. I'm, I'm gonna go with Brick and say um maybe it would be best if you were just to have a little slight breakdown uh, of what you're saying. No, no, no. The, the video did it. The guy in the video did it. Okay, you're right. Okay, good. No problem. Oh, ministers did it. He did it. He did everything that we were supposed to do. So that was that's why I was confused on Brick. Like, bro, did you watch? I don't think he watched the video. That's probably what you he you only re responded to what the video says. I, I don't know. All right, hold on one second. Let me just do this for the family real quick. Hold on one second. Where where do you go again for the whole ancestry overview? Where you see this thing with um. Uh, here we go right here view your report paternal haplogroup all right here we go yeah this right here so everybody who has taken 23 and me as an african-american are living here in the west you see this right here so kyle was asking he want to talk about this this is why we're talking about it pharaoh ramesses the third they're saying that you share an, an ancient paternal lineage with pharaoh ramesses the third so every single person in america is saying, hey, we Egyptians, based on what 23andMe put out, based on this. So you see all these guys who are Egyptomaniacs, oh, I'm related, smash Rockwell, all these guys, oh, I'm related. So we're going to break down what happened and how they came to this conclusion and why we should never use this as a reference at all, period. All right? So that's why we're going to talk about the DNA. But you also now, don't, uh, don't, don't shoot yourself in the foot now with with discrediting 23 and me I, I believe i don't believe that's in our best interest bro okay all right no problem well, well that's the thing I, I i don't think he's shooting 23 and me and me in the foot i think he's saying that the information has been misinterpreted from 23 and me by people who may not be as well astute in the field okay, of genetics good, to, right. un to understand it and so no, that would no, be no, that no, would be the no, point. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. No. So he shoots. He shoots. Yeah, he is shooting. <laughs> okay. Twenty three and me is faking. Twenty three and me is faking the funk with this E one B one E. Okay. Regarding now. paternal. Regarding. Hold on. Regard. Listen to me carefully now, because yeah. I, I listen. This is being recorded, and I'm not going to take this video down. All right. E one B one A. The reading from Ramesses the third. I think it's very questionable. So that's what biblical DNA and um, brother 93 and um, others are going to get into. All right. Justin, did you want to say something before? Yeah. I, 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 well, you, you, not you, Kyle, me. not you, oh, Kyle. Justin, Don Law. Don Law, what's up? You want to say something, bro? Oh, Don Law, what's up, man? Yeah, he on Clubhouse now. He ain't got time for it. Oh, uh, no, nah, man. I'm just listening. I'm enjoying the show. <laughs> what's up, yo? <laughs> Don Law, what's up, nigga? Man, you know I'm in the building, right right? <laughs> What's good, bro? All right, cool. Biblical DNA, your connection is bad, bro. We got to get you, um, what do you call it? 
Now, if you go back and listen to the video when I played T.O. Twins video, he broke it down how they the, how they listen to the um the whole AI thing and and all that good stuff. So that's what he was doing at the beginning of the video. Then I played the second part, which is the original video where they got it from. He broke down the Putin how they 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 switched up his voice and said that he said something in the translation which he did. So that's what it was about. If that wasn't done properly. Maybe I need to do it over, and I'll take that into consideration when I watch it over. All right? Biblical DNA, you're up, my brother. Tess, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Let me go ahead and share this screen. Sound like you got a laser in the background. Yeah, you got a laser or something in your background, bro. All right. Give me a second. Everybody mute up. Everybody mute up. See if that helps. You still, still like that? Yeah, I don't know if you got Mace Windu swinging a lightsaber back there. Nah. Hey, 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 T, can I get in 30 seconds and I'll jump off? Yeah, go ahead, man. Okay, so I, I was just saying, I think it just seems a little disingenuous. Are you trying to take over my show again? Yeah. No, I'm going to jump off at the 30. Go ahead, Brick. Let, let him go, man. All right. Come on, go ahead. Brick. Go ahead, Biblical DNA. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Uh, it's the same thing, right? That ain't it. Let Brick on, man. Let him, let him do his thing. Maybe change the source of your audio. Brick, I'm fighting for you, man. In the dead, the dead time where no one's speaking, I, I do want to mention that EB38 is a, a is a strand or predecessor uh, lineage for E1B1A, right? So we we when we dive into this phylogenetics, we, we got to deal with, I think you will understand the span, the spanning tree protocol, uh, th Thunder. This is how things get deciphered and they get separated, right? So with this is you have EV38, which is a branch, I mean, a strand of E1B1A. Now E1B1A is the, the naming um, of a particular haplogroup. Now, it, within that haplogroup, it develops other haplogroups with more specific naming or nomenclatures, right? And for us that's in West Africa, predominantly we come through uh, M2 and M180 as our direct lineages. And these lineages go back 17 to 20,000 years. And so if we're claiming E1B1A, in relationship to the point of which we met on that on that that tree then this is before kemet this is before oyo this is before any of these things came into existence so we got to be more refined with our information because there's nothing that shows me that 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 there is a a soul unity of these uh these uh haplogroups and i, I kind of just want to find out where this information is coming from because it, it, it kind of avoids the strs completely in part of the conversation and I, that's the thing that i'm not sure if we understand and I, I think we could dive into that to get a better clarity all right cool all right biblical dna 93 do you want to jump in in the meantime or in goals the right, let's say biblical dna let's see how you are now Go ahead, on, test, test, test. Yes. Uh, that's better. That's much better. All right, we could work with that. Damn, man. I had you on my microphone, but this is not Oh, maybe you got the phone. Do you got the phone next to the mic? Maybe that's what's doing it. Nice. It's on the other side of me. I appreciate that, man. Hey, Reese, when you're ready, come jump on and talk about your lineage, bro. That's what's up. Like the honesty. Shout out to Reese Anderson in the building, my Jamaican brother. Peace and love to you. All right, so can you see my, see my, my your screen, screen is up? Yeah, your screen is up. All right, so this is family tree DNA. So it's not just 23andMe, it's also family tree DNA. It's a way to market it in sales to get people to you know buy their product, to buy a DNA test. You know, you see a friend or a family member say, hey, you know, look, I share a paternal haplogroup with branches of 
when Graham sees the third, you know, maybe you do also. So that'll spark the interest with people. So it's marketing. It's a marketing scheme where 23andMe decided to show people, you know, hey, you share EV38 or EM2. It used to be EM2 um, when 23andMe first came out with it. And then they switched it to EV38. But they say you share a paternal haplogroup lineage with Ramses III. However, what they're doing is citing um, Zawahawas, Gad, Hawas, et Gad, et 2012. And I can share that screen. So this is the study that they're um, citing. So Family Tree DNA, I contacted them directly and they told me this is exactly what they're citing. But as you saw, it had EP2. It didn't have EM2 or E1B1A, it had EP2 on there. It used to have EP177. But anyways, this is the study that they're citing, revisiting the Haram conspiracy and death of Ramses III, anthropological, forensic, Radiological and genetic study. Hold on, hold on one second. Hold on one second. You said something about EP2. You're saying that family tree DNA is saying that they're going by what? Let me go ahead and share that screen again. This is very important, family. Very important. As you can see, the line that goes back to E P2. Now, what 60% of African American men carry is a haplogroup known as EV38, which right. goes to E-M2. Right. With N Nelson Mandela, um, people in the West Coast of Africa, they carry that, that haplogroup. That's the main haplogroup um, of the transatlantic slave trade, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So, and so, before... Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show that I want to show this one too, so you can see I'm not making this up that they were in fact showing that he belonged to E-P177. I'm gonna stop sharing this one and go to the other family tree DNA. Wow. Yep. So they changed it up. Well, and that's that's the thing that I think that we're we're missing is that the technology for um for uh diving into these technologies and sciences are being updated. And we're not moving Great with point. the updates. Great and like I, I, I can pull up the exact same information that you're pulling up. You're pulling up a source. I just looked at it. It says 2012. Now the updated information based on 2020. Uh, this one I'm looking at is 2022. Um, and they have a more refined way to um, name the haplogroups. They ask to go a little bit deeper into that. So when you're looking at E1B1A. Um, excuse me. We, we can start with E period. You got E EM ninety six. EM ninety six splits to E one. E one has a line that's uh P E P uh four. I mean one forty seven. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, Kyle, are you saying the same thing he's about to say? Hold on, he's about to make the same point. Okay, all right, go ahead. You got it on the screen. So, but great, great point by Kyle. Two thousand twelve. Is totally different than 2024 when it comes to DNA and checking genetics. Very good point. But well, go ahead, my brother. And absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Absolutely. Because um, in 2014, um, there's a paper that actually mentions that how they, how the Egyptians, now they said back in 2013, 14, that they moved on to next generation sequencing. But when I contacted Dr. Yah Zigad, he told me that they just acquired next generation sequencing for their lab. And now this is back in 2023 when I first started emailing them. So I'm just saying. All right, now what we got here is family tree DNA. So connect with Ram King Ramses III and his eldest son in haplogroup group E-P177. And you see how they're, they're trying to market this? Do you belong to haplogroup E-P177? You are the product of a long line dating back to the now mummified Ramses III and his son who tried to kill him. You see what I'm saying? Marketing. Now, So hold on a second though. So how did he get to the EP177 all of a sudden? 
because what they're doing, Brother Garfield, is they're citing um, that paper that I just, that I had up, the revisiting the Haram conspiracy. Let me go ahead and start sharing this screen. Sharing the Haram conspiracy. Because we're gonna go into the, the YSTR values and everything. We can run them through, we at this happen through particular, I don't care, it's all good. Yeah, Jim. And by the way, folks, so I gave all the links to Brother Garfield just for, for more education on Y chromosome STRs and whatnot. Hold on one hey. second. Mr. Hey. 707 and everybody in the chat, we're talking about E1B1A right now. We'll talk about the R in a second. Don't try to distract us. You see, that's the problem. We always get thrown off. We're talking about E1B1A 23 Me. That's what we're talking about. We'll get to the R and what Razib Khan said in a minute. Relax. Stay on topic. Hey, would yeah. you mind if I was to share a source um, that not would help? Yet, not, yet, not yet. Let him do his okay. whole full presentation first. Oh, my bad. I, I ain't know it was a presentation. My bad, bro. I, I apologize. Now, let's go ahead and cook with that with that, um, that user hat up. So, as we can see right here, all staff involved in the sampling Protective, protective, protective clothing, yeah. sterile gloves, and face masks to protect exogenous contamination. Go ahead. Exactly. So if there was contamination, I'm not claiming this. It wouldn't be from the staff that did it, the lab workers that did it themselves. It could be previous contamination from 1980s or whenever they discovered um, the mummy of Ramses III, or it could have been a long time ago in ancient times. We don't know if there's any contamination. That's the reason why Dr. Gad mentioned that he is going to, him is, and his co-workers, they're going to revisit old mummies. And this includes the pharaohs. They're going to revisit these pharaohs, and they're going to sequence them using next-generation sequence. Hope that clears that up. All right, so as we see right here, I don't want to waste nobody's time. We'll be this quick. The Y chromosomal haplogroups of Ramses III, an unknown man E. Okay, everybody, y'all can see this? It's clear for everybody? Yes, 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 that's good, that's good. I'm gonna mm -hmm. highlight it for y'all too. You try to. There we go. The Y chromosomal haplogroups of Ramses III, an unknown man E, was screened using the wit at these haplogroup predictors. Uh, we see that there's a footnote right there, right? Citation. Let's go to it. Right here. At the TW, have a prediction from YSTR values using the Bay Asian LL frequency approach. J. Gen General, 2006. Bam. That's it. Garfield letting go the end. He's in. No, no, no. Oh, okay, I'm here. Yes, you are, my brother. Ah, what's up? What's up? What's up? Peace to the panel. Peace, biblical. Peace, Garfield. Peace, peace fortune. Peace, peace to the whole peace, panel. Peace, How y'all doing? I'm listening in, though. All I right. don't know what I missed so far. We do have two All right. So, genetic kingship analysis revealed identical haplotypes in both mummies using the wit at these haplotypes predictors. We identified the Y chromosomal haplotype. E1B1A. So that's the wit at the predictor, haplogroup predictor. Correct. And that's oh, the only that was the only one that was available back in 2012. So uh, what's wrong? What's wrong with that though? What's wrong with that wit at the predictor? What's wrong with that? So the wit at these haplogroup predictor, it doesn't um it doesn't calculate errors. So the what the YSTR values can be random numbers. Um, maybe by accident, maybe the lab worker messed up when they were um and they were running it. And we don't know because they used Y filler S and P. Oh yeah, here it goes right here. This is the kit that they use right here to sequence it. Hey biblical, did you show him the third uh, the STR that was used when we put in a nav gene a few what a couple of years ago? Did you show him he that? Didn't, or? He didn't, yeah, not yet. He's not he's about to get there. He didn't yeah, we're gonna get to it. And okay, this is okay. the 16 Y chromosomal short tandem repeats that were used. So this is what um brother Amir Ngozi is talking about right here. These are the 16 Y chromosomal short tandem repeats. Now let's go straight to these SDRs. 
These are them right here. Let's see what y'all saying. Let me see it good. So we'll see Ramesses the third right here at the top and the unknown man E. So the, the one that was questionable was the DS DYS391, right? Is that the one? DYS390. This is a typical um these are carriers that belong to E dash and M2. They usually carry this happy or this YSTR guy. Keep it up. You gotta talk up louder. You gotta talk louder. You hear me? Yeah, you gotta talk okay. louder. Okay. Yeah, so this YSCR EYS 390 with the value of 21 is usually carried by people who carry E1B1A. However, that's not always the case. That's, that was clear? Okay. All right. Let's do with Athens. Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Because when when we can't hear you in and out, it's really messing the show up. So when people are watching the replays, what are you trying to say about DYS 390? What are you trying to say? And look, what they what a lot of people like to do, I, I know biblical speaking because his his phone is low, but I'm supporting the brother. With that DYS 390 equals 21, people try to play like it was just E1B1A. So you have to be very cautious there. That. That's what he's trying to explain. Because people uh -huh. seeing the DYS 390 equal 21, they assume that it was E1B1A. But I'll let the brother um what he's what he's trying to explain. I don't know if you um if you if, if biblical could you could could you be heard? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. yeah, you're good. Okay, so I got you on my headphones. So. All right. So these are the YSTR values. Um, that is collected from both Ramses the third and unknown man. Now, you might be asking yourself, like, why would they make teams like calculate, you know, have these two? There's two different samples, and I 100% agree with that. However, when we run these YSTR values in next gen, which we're going to see, let's do we add these happy first. Let me go ahead and um, change my screen. So here we go. This is the wit at these happy for the victor. All right. And there's nothing wrong like when um Thomas um wit at the when he came out with this. I mean, this was like legit. This is viral informatics right here. This is top of the line. This is the I believe this is the only one that was available at the time. I could be mistaken. But I believe it was the only one that was available as an online tool to calculate um, a haplotype. type. All right. So we see the area of selection, Northwest Europe, East Europe, Mediterranean, equal priors. What would y'all say on the, on, on the panel? What's wrong with this? What's missing? From you don't the see the J marker. You don't see the R marker. Mm -hmm. You don't see um, Q. You don't see none, nothing else. All you see is... Okay. Um, Q's on there. Q's under O. It's on okay. there. Okay. But no J, no R. J's on there. You don't have A. You don't have B. You don't have D. Um, in the area selection, you don't have Africa. Like, Africa, we know Africa is very diverse. Even on this panel, um, you got EM2 on this panel right here. You got um, Fortune, I believe, belongs to a down plate of A, right? Is it A dash M thirteen or different? Yeah, according to yep, according to my enemies, you know, click click, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there you go. I belong to EV thirteen, an S and P underneath uh, EV thirteen myself, and it's not what people like to say. It's only oh, EV thirteen. That's just the European hat look. Ain't nobody really black carry that. Well, I have a DNA match with uh, Yusuf Salam. And, you know, if you know the Central Park Five, he has very dark skin. So, I mean, it's not, you never know what Y chromosome a man carries. Just by oh, so that's what, you, that's what you sent me? You related to the dude, the Central Park Five guy? So, you got E3B? I want, so I want to yep. I I explain something, though, too, what my brother Biblical DNA is saying. 
Uh, I think biblical DNA, you EV13 under E1B1B, correct? Correct. So I want people to know that the guy from Central Park 5, again, that's a minority in a larger base of African Americans. You can have, some African Americans can have R1BM269. That's the second largest haplogroup group amongst African Americans outside of EM2. But then you have these outlier populations or groups within us, or I'm not going to say populate, we are population ourselves, but you have these outliers within us when you find African Americans with E1A, which is EM33. You find them with haplogroup group A, like my brother Fortune. You find them with B, like Chris Rock. Um, and you'll find some with E1B1B. That EB13, um, we have to be very cautious with that clay, uh, just because he's a black man with it. Down the line, a lot of the EV-13 was found in the Balkans, in the Mediterranean, in the portions of the Balkans, before it drifting all further into, um, into Europe. So he probably got it from a great, 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 great grandfather who was a white man. So E1B1B, in some cases, was given to some of these blacks by white people. You can't play the color game with haplogroups. I, I just want the world to hit that. A haplogroup, anybody can share a haplogroup. It doesn't define who you are. So just like, you know, um, biblical DNA is EV-13 and the other guy's EV-13. His great, regardless of what he looked like, he could be as black as space. His Y chromosome could have came from a man who was probably from Spain, Portugal, or a Medi some type of Mediterranean European. You know, yep. and that's just man came from a white man too. <laughs> you, I mean, Yorkshire, and, baby, and Yorkshire, there's a to a very uh, to a lesser extent. So yeah, so haplogroups is, shouldn't be defined by what a person looked like. It really shouldn't. But we know amongst African Americans. Um, the largest uh, paternal line amongst them at a larger percentage, and this is what I want people to be cautious of, is E1B1A. That's the largest amongst them, on average, ranging from 60 to 70 percent. Behind that is R1BM269, which comes from Northwestern European, British, Irish, Scottish people. And after that, you start to find these other outliers, like A, B, or, or E1B1B, or even EM33, which is E1A, you know. Or or G or something like that. Uh, yeah, you got some brothers with G. Uh, my brother or Gullah J. Gullah Geechee, got, Gullah Geechee got G, and other people got J two and J one. But that's that's a lesser extent. But we're all still clustered as African American, regardless of what our, our haplogroups groups is. These sex chromosomes. People get caught up in that. You know, it just tell your deep ancestral male line or main line or maternal line, your maternal side or your paternal side. But once they go through all these people autosomally in a few generations. Society defines you what you are based off that. So no one's asking you when they pull you over. Hey, do you share the same haplogroup group as me? That shit don't mean nothing. I'm just keeping it real. It doesn't mean anything. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, some yeah, some of our greatest some of our greatest African Americans who shall not be named on this broadcast. Oh uh, no, I'm, <laughs> I, I'll say it. Michael Jack Michael Jackson R1B, Muhammad Ali R1B, Marcus Garvey uh, European marker, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King okay. European marker. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole lot of a good. Jada Kiss is half of group T. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's move on. But what <laughs> I need to at this point tag down about the, the, the Whitney um predictor so people understand what is the problem. What is the real problem with the Whitney predictor? So, like I said earlier, you can still hear me, right? I'm good, loud and clear. Yeah, we can yeah. hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, like I was saying earlier, this haplogroup group predictor, it doesn't predict errors. You know, you can make up random YCRs. As you can see, I'm under 390. I switched it to 23. What happened over here? What are the results showing? E1B1B. So if there's a problem with this, you know, and it, that's, that's an issue because just because he has DYS390 90 of 21, that doesn't mean he's an E1B1A. There's there's people that carry E1B1B that also carry DYS390 um, over 21 values. They have a different haplogroup? Say again? There's people who have 390 that have a different haplogroup? That's what he's yeah, showing you, Garfield. Yeah. That's what he's showing you. Absolutely. And we if we got time today, or we can do it another time. We can go on Family Tree DNA where um, that's where a lot of the, the data, that's where a lot of the data comes from is family tree DNA. They have the largest um, open like data of Y chromosome, like YSTRs, short tandem repeats. Oh, when they, did, they, did they put this in another predictor to see what would happen? Absolutely not. And when they do, um, that's what I was about to quote up when, um, when they were speaking, when they did the maternal and paternal lineages, and came to a commons family in 2020 
they just kept the same YSTR predictor, like the the weight at these type of predictor. They didn't did not use NevGen. They continued using the previous Happy Group predictor they used in 2011, 2012, so they can you know stay unbiased. Like they remain doing the same thing instead of actually like going up to an uh, updated Happy Group predictor because you know updated you're gonna have more data. Data is what's gonna be determined these YSTRs, because you have um, people that carry E1, B1A, they predominantly have the same repeats. It's going to be very similar. They're going to have similar um, YSTR volumes. If anybody wants to add to that. No, I, I just think that we need to maybe um, the, the conversation right now is very super high level, and let's, let's make it simple. And I, I will ask you guys to kind of articulate why was the haplo group um naming nomenclature changed and express that to the people um so that we could all get a full understanding on why we had to well not we but why the geneticists had to slightly change the way that they name these different haplogroups so i can say the letter um so like b right or my favorite one that i know from the top of my head j1 p58 that P stands for the person that discovered um, that haplogroup. So that's the page is the person that discovered that haplogroup. Therefore, it's J1 P58. Is that what you're asking about? No, not really. Uh, I appreciate that information, but I was mm -hmm. referring more to when we were having a discussion about E1 B1A. Uh, about how that haplogroup was used as a blanket term for a lot of those uh, those those ethnic groups in East Africa and West Africa, as if it was a monolithic uh, haplogroup. And based on modern science and the advances, we now have a more refined way to determine and be a little bit more accurate with naming a haplogroup. So now, someone who may have been E1B1A may have may come up as uh m2 or uh m180 or ep252 like i believe my brother and gozi is um based on the modern naming uh nomenclature so you're talking about like s and p's yeah snips yep yeah so yeah they didn't use that um back in 2012 so we don't really have that information um that's the reason why um dr gad mentioned that he's go they're going to be retesting those samples with next generation sequence yeah and then, no that, that that's exactly what i was asking about i just want us to articulate it um because i know brother and gozies look at that as the forerunner in the community um okay. dealing with genetics and i just kind of want him to speak on that so we can all understand that you know with technology we don't we don't use dial up anymore even though it worked at some point in time we use ethernet or, or uh fiber technologies to communicate we use iphones and you know galaxies now we don't use flip phones because the technology has elevated us to a different level and that's the same thing that happened with genetics is that the technology made it so that we can have more refined scientific understandings of the things that we're that we're using on a daily basis and I don't think that a lot of people understand that those changes are being made to refine and better the science, not change it. It's, science always evolves, just like we do. And if, and if science doesn't get more refined, then guess what we do to that science? We throw that shit out the window because it's not giving us real-time accurate information. That, that's, I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. Coyote, I'm sorry, Coyote, what was your question? You said, why do they change the name of the nomenclatures of these haplogroups? No, why, why, yeah, why do we use a new naming um, uh, nomenclature, I guess you would say? Well, they, they're technically still the same. They just changed the nominal label. Like, if, like for example, EP252, which is what me and you have, is E1B1A7A. It's the same. Mm -hmm. It's E1B1A7A, EP252, which is that clade under EM2. So these are different clays. So a lot of times when different clays are found, first they are tentative, which is uncertain. You'll see that with the star mark. Then later on, mm -hmm. as they see it, they start to look at downstream mutations and they split. So they start to increase or change the numbers. But they're still the same markers. Like you got a whole bunch of clays or downstream mutations under EM2. So sometimes they discover new ones and they can discover yeah. new ones. 
So that's the only reason why some things change. But it's still under the major cuff of whatever whatever the marker is. Just like my marker and your marker, even though we EP252, we're still E1B1A7A under the under EM2. But we're under yeah. that clade or that subclade under EM2. There's an estimated time of when our clade mutated, when it arose compared to other clades of EM2 that you find. So just because you E1B1A or EM2 don't mean that you share the same clade with some people that's EM2. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, now I'm on the same page. I wasn't asking um, based on my ignorance. I was asking so we can have that conversation. Oh, so publicly. oh yeah. For the yeah, 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 yeah. So sometimes yeah. the downstream they develop, they discover new downstreams, and through time, sometimes they change. Sometimes and, not really change, but you get what I'm saying. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I was just saying if Garfield could share my screen, it would reinforce what you just said because I have a phylogenetic chart pulled up right here. <laughs> oh, let. Let let biblical DNA finish what he's going to present, and then y'all could come in and do whatever y'all want to do. Let him just finish what he's doing. All right, go uh, ahead. Uh, biblical DNA, go ahead. All right, so these are the dependent tree. We are the the Nev gen, and this is the calculation. Um, the order that I have it in is called dependent tree DNA order. You can see. You're going side. in and out. You're going in and out, brother. Can you hear me? Yeah, but you're going in and out. You're talking and then you go low. You get low. Give me a second. Go in somewhere else. Give me a second. All right. All right. So what he has on the screen is the Nevgen predictor. So this is what they said they're going to use Amir to um Ngozi to um to check to recheck Ramesses the third and the um the other stuff, right? Yeah, so if, if my brother Biblical DNA put those STRs that we have from Ramesses the third in there, you will see what the SNPs say. You got the fitness, the high fitness, and different things that'll be used on there. But some people, if you put it on this one, you may get an, another. If you put those STRs that was used to determine what his mark is, it'll let you know. It may give you something different outside of E1B1A. So that's why people shouldn't get caught up in the commercial company. Not Don't get it twisted. 23andMe is good, but when people get caught up in the commercialization of what they do to promote to get money, because remember, it's all about money. You got to yep. be cautious of that. You got to be yep. cautious of that. So uh, when he put these SCRs in there, you guys will see what the clay to say. If you put it in this um, predictor, use outside yeah, of the one outdated. Go ahead. Go ahead. Biblical kick. Go ahead. I'm back. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, 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 speak, yeah, yeah. Up loud. speak loud, bro. Yeah. Speak loud. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, as you can see, the order what we have right here is the family tree DNA order, right? As you can see under settings, if you click settings, you have order of family tree DNA order. You also have order of 17 markers, order of 23 markers, general level, subclades, subclades of R1B, R1A, I, J, E, N, G, right? Go ahead and go ahead and copy this. You can see, and you can, W this video. What's that? Um, as you can see, we have a the calculated group in the middle, right? It says one, the values of the fitness are too small. There is probably an error in the order of the STRs. Unsupported subclades, 100 percent Okay. Continue, my brother. Continue. So as we can see, the number one haplogroup group under the family tree DNA. Or order is J1A2A1A2P58. The second E1B1B B1133. Then you got E1B1B B22. All right, so this is what NevGen, when they're looking at this to see if there's any accuracy in this, this is it right here. This this chart. I can't highlight it, but this is it, the thing in the middle. And gray. That's what they're using, and you can sh see which haplogroups um, these um, YSCR values share similar um, values to. See, the following with this three uh, D DYS three ninety three is is very rare that somebody carries an eight value. For that. Nobody really carries that. It's very, I have not found any samples of anybody carrying that BYS 393.8. I haven't. It's the truth. I, I have not found a single person alive that carries that. 
what did that mean? Did it mean nobody ever carried it? No, not not exactly. That means it's not in. There's no data available for anybody carrying it or ancient DNA for anybody. Anybody want to chime in? Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. So are you saying that that is a possibility that Ramses could have carried a haplogroup group that doesn't exist anymore? Based off of these YSTR values, that's exactly what Ned Jen, um, the creator of this haplogroup group predictor, said. Hmm. And, right, and, 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 and biblical, I want to I want to throw the ball with you right quick. I want the audience to hear you because me and you had this beautiful conversation before. And mm -hmm. if he did have a clade, I'm just saying a probability. If he did have a clade of E1B1A, it would have been a unique clade. So people got to understand that as well. It would have been a common clade that you find amongst populations of our downstream of our clade. Because if you can read the article called People in Other, Other Early Green Sahara, it clearly says that there's a, there's two distinct clays of E1B1A, one unique to Egypt at 5% and another one unique to Morocco at 5%, very low. So there are unique clays of those markers there because there's one unique clade in Morocco and there's one unique clade in, in Egypt. And the article that you guys should check out is people in the early green Sahara. But those clays are distinct from ours. But I'm just saying if, if, if there's a clade of E1B1A, but based off what we have, available now and if you know how to read this stuff he it's highly that he wasn't e1b1a i'm just being honest uh, and and the chart that i'm looking at in goes it would actually reinforce that point because em um, 96 uh which is a predecessor to e1b1a is split three different ways and one of those ways that it split and went to was northeast africa so that would be completely logical for that to happen yep but i digress all right, so if you want to know more about, um, well, this is the one, this is, so this is order of 70 markers. As we can see, still see that there's a warning, the values of fitness are too small. There is probably an error in the order of the SCRs. Still zero. Now, if you were to click, say, for example, subclades of R1B, right? Let's go ahead and click that. We see that it comes up equaling a hundred, almost a hundred percent, you know. And if you go to that specific S and P, it goes to one hundred percent. But the the owner of this happy predictor said that it's too small to be R one B, and it, it doesn't work that way. However, when I look at this, this tells me there's something wrong with these YSCRs because why would they even possibly come out as R one? And maybe I found a flaw in this guy's calculator, but where's the, you know, this, at least there's a flaw in this one. And the owner has said that there's a flaw in this calculator when it comes to, you know, using short 16 YSCRs and trying to calculate for subclades of R1B. But we at this type of group predictor cannot do that. It, it won't show you that there was any errors that was, you know, ever occurring in the calculator. Did you try it on the E1B1B? Yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's choose let's choose subclades of E. And you want me to do E1B1 um B, right? Mm -hmm. So that's EN35. Okay. That's EN35. That's EN35. And but we see the same thing being unsupported 100%. But at the top, we see E1B1B, B22, PH28, 18, BY6746, with a probability of zero. But we see the fitness level has gotten higher at 2.36. Mm. Let's do, since we already did that one, let's be un unbiased and choose B38. For E1B1A. As we can still see, unsupported subclade, 100%. But we still see um, for the predictions E1B1B, B22, BH28, 
18BY6746. Wow. Fit. Probability zero, fitness 2.5. And, and just to to beat a dead horse, is it is it true that when they do like the STRs and use that to the, to show the closeness of distance for haplogroups, are they testing the same um, the same strand of DNA or um, same calculations? Same calculations. Same calculations from before. Well, no, no, a little bit deeper question, but like when when they when they're testing STRs, is, this is going to be the uh, variations or the changes this on the allele level. Are they testing for the exact same like start to beginning sequence of those DNA of the DNA strands and mutation? That's that's the, I guess that's the question I'm asking. Hey, Gozi, you want to answer that? And Gozi. Gozi. Oh, yo, yo, what's up? What's up, Garfield? I'm here. Yeah, Kyle was asking a question. If it's the same rate of rapid um mutation as um the alleles when they're doing when we're doing the testing now through Nevgen. Do, do they have the same rate of change and all that stuff? Is it pretty much the same? So 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 for me and Kyle, oh, go ahead, Kyle. What's your question? Because I want to fully understand. Well, yeah, I, I, I want to ask my question specifically because, like, when, when we're looking at STR testing, so STR test is what develops uh, what we know as a haplogroup based on their their distance from each other. And I, if I'm wrong on that, you can correct me, but that's my understanding of it, right? And they look for similarities, and they they uh, they place these uh, groups based on their similarity based on their these, these single uh mutations that happen on the allele level is that kind of similar is that kind of right so far so so big snip test when it comes to sex chromosome or haplogroups or y chromosomes is it, it gives you it has higher resolution which gives you the completion of the uh single nucleotide polymorphisms the short tandem mm -hmm. repeats measure the distance or whatever but it okay. gives you a better idea of, of your Y chromosome. That's why people go to family tree and they get the, the big, big SNP or big Y test because it has higher resolution to give you the whole, you know, thing of your downstream oh, okay. and your SNP. So, for example, I'm going to give you this because I don't want to take over Brother Garfield's show. So, even though me and you are EP252, you may have a unique downstream that's distinct from mine. Like, mine is found primarily in a Basa clan of Nigeria. Even though yeah. EP252 is highly in Yoruba, man, at a higher percentage, you also have other clans with the, with distinct branches of that or downstreams of that. So the Basa people have my clay uniquely, according to my big watch snip from Family Tree. You found it amongst the Basa people, which is the Mendi people. Your clay may be highly found in, in the Yoruba or people in Gabon. I don't know. But we do share the same clay, you know, of EP252, but I don't know your downstream. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get it. I get what you're saying. So basically with the with the larger or the bigger uh, testing, they have a larger section of the DNA that are testing for isolated mutations that are happening on the genome level, I mean, on the uh, allele level, and they right. use that to... Okay, I, I get what you're saying. That, that that was my question. I appreciate the answer because it's so clear. It, it, it clear it, 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 it gives you a better banner. With this Ramos use the third thing, it's not enough. I mean, it gives you an idea of what it is highly, but it can go in any direction based off what predictor it's put in. As you can see, what with, with brother uh, biblical DNA is doing. So with the old one, we thought we assumed it's E1B1A, and people baiting off that, especially mm -hmm. these DNA companies. Yeah, 23 and me, you connected the Ramos. You got mm -hmm. niggas looking crazy. But then when you put it in other ones, there's a there's a question mark to that, and you know. Yeah. There's a question mark okay. To that. Now that make a lot of sense. So instead of looking at a hundred or two hundred or twenty five different alleles that have have mutated over a short period of time, now they're looking at a thousand or two thousand, and they're seeing the consistencies, and they're saying, "Hey, now we can reclassify these things." And that was my initial question: is how that change came about in the in the uh, in the genetics field to to reclassify individuals but it sounds like the reclassification is a result of further testing and and deeper diving over a, a larger testing uh yes and higher okay. resolution and, and, yeah, okay. and, and okay, I, hope cool. biblical, I hope i hope biblical get to the part 
Biblical is cold. I want the audience to know this because Biblical even reached out. He got a, a, a response from one of the people that was responsible for giving that idea of E1B1A. And it kind of killed the whole thing. But I'm going to let him do what he do. I don't want to disturb this at all. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Go ahead, Biblical uh, DNA. It's up to you. You're up. Yes, yeah, so you, you want to see if you want that um, those are talking about you can actually don't like how you sound, bro. Don't you don't sound right now. Are you using what are you using? Are you using a headphones? Yeah, I have to because I was using my um, my microphone. Um, Why don't you just plug it out and just talk straight to the screen? Are you using a phone? No, because I have to right? connect it to two screens, that's why. So I have my um my MacBook in port, so it's connected uh, to two screens. Uh, are you alone in your house? I mean, yeah. I mean, all right. So you need to shout. Then you need to shout because we can't hear you. Give me a second. Let me see. Yeah, a lot of times the Bluetooth be doing that. There you go. What's that? Oh, you sounded a while ago. You sounded good. Oh, that was fortune. Oh, that was fortune? Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to come on another channel. I'm gonna speak to my other channel and I'll just share it on this one. I can do that. Why he getting that together? In goes you say he reached out to the person responsible for postulating E1B1A? Yeah, yeah, to, yeah, 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 biblical, yeah. Biblical, biblical have the email of responders to one of the people. I think the guy that gave him a response is actually a, a AA, African American uh, person who worked in that field, and he was giving him like, like. You got to hear how biblical DNA explains it when you read it, if you get to that point. But um, it's again, they need higher resolution for a lot of these mummies, even with the idea of, 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 of Tut being R1B. You know, we have to be certain that this is not a contaminant. You have a lot of Northwestern um, Europeans who has touched Tut mummy for hundreds of years. So we have to be very cautious mm -hmm. if some of these things are contaminations. Or, or, or if it's literal. So this is why they're going to use higher resolutions to give us a better idea of what these of what these markers are. Right now, it's really uncertain. But people are baiting on this. And I'm not saying they're baiting on it, you know, for they're baiting on it for financial reasons. They're doing it with Europeans are doing it or people of European descent are doing it. Black people are doing it. I mean, this is a business. This is a business. So you got to be very cautious with a lot of these samples based off telling you, yeah, this 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 Egyptian is connected to you. You know, they even tried to play that with Tut at first. But when you read the article from, I think, 2000 and what, uh, what was that, 2009, when you read the article, when they sequenced it, it said R1BA2. And it's like King Tut is connected to all Northwestern Europeans. But R1BA2 is not R1BM269. R1BA2 is BA8 clay of R1B. So you have to be you have to read this stuff. Before you say this is what it is, and I, you know I'm not going to be arrogant enough to say I know what it is because I don't know. I'm not that guy. But based off available data, it, it's just whatever it's presented to be for now. But you have to be very cautious. I wouldn't look at that like it's an absolute because it's not. Biblical DNA. What are you showing on the screen right now? What is this you're showing? All right, can y'all hear me now? Yeah, oh, perfect. There you go. Amazing. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Bro got his mic off section eight now. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I switched to my phone, so I'm uh, glad it wor it's working now. I'm, my my apologies. All right, go ahead. Um, go ahead. no, but these are the family tree DNA um YSTRs that from samples, you know, from people that it's actually done a test. And so, what I was going to show, um, I'm going to have to find one. But you, what I was saying earlier, you have different people that belong to different habit groups that have DYS three ninety values of 21 so this oh, is a perfect this so is a perfect that, yeah right, this is on, give me a second let's do this let's do this this, 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 do this. this is on, a perfect on. this is a perfect example give me a second garfield look at that 
that's a, that's a carrier of haplogroup G. And you see right there, 21. Now I'm gonna take this this um sample ID and I'm gonna run it to the top so people can see I'm not lying about this. But go ahead. You see haplogroup I too. Look at that. All right, so for the for the for Ramesses the third, he has the same DYS three ninety at twenty one. So mm -hmm. he shows that people who they are basing him being E one B one A off the DYS three ninety. And what happened is other people had twenty one at that, and is is related to other haplogroups. I hope people get the point you're trying to make. So three ninety, look at this guy. He's G, right? Which is very rare for African Americans, but G is a is a group that goes back to the some uh, is it to the Levant or to to North um, um Southern Europe? Part of the Caucasus, I think. Yeah, mm. but the point is, it's the same DYS three ninety reading that Ramesses the third has, but this person has G, but they gave him E in the Whitney um predictor. I yeah, because understand that what, what we're trying to say. Absolutely, because the data available then is different than the data is available now. Let me go to the other one. That was another G marker I saw that carries it right there. Kuwait. Let's do this. I, I just want to show everybody, like, I'm not making this up. And y'all saw earlier, if I change 21 to our DYS um, 390 to 23, it goes to E1B1B. So it just shows you something. The data wasn't there back in 2012. And there's not a knock on with at these type group predictor or um, Zawi Hawas and um, GAD. But back in 2020 and 2021, they could have made mention of using other haplogroup group you know, to, you know, verify their findings. That could be something, that could have been something they could have done and they did not do that. Money, 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 money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> those are expensive. Those tests are expensive though. I was actually gonna um, show how much those tests cost when they do ancient DNA. Man, just want to do this last one just to show everybody what I'm talking about. It's hey, Biblical, are you, going, are you going to show the audience when you reached out to him, to Zabi Hawass, and when you reached out to the guy who was working in, in the field for Ramesses? You going to show that? Um, if you, if y'all want me to, I mean, it's just on my my community. There's there show there's that. anything else y'all want me to do. Show yeah, that. yeah, show show that. We we want the audience to see how you you're not playing. How you reached out to one of the people that was working and his response. And when you reached out to Zawi Hawass and he tried to play you, telling you to buy his book. Like these niggas. Oh just gosh. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. Hey, on your on your community board. Let me share the community board for a second. There's something okay. that gentleman's been asking in the chat. And um, biblical DNA. Let me show you community board. You talked about. You did mention. You're talking to Razib Khan, and uh, you tagged him. You tagged me. You tagged on. Um, mm. You say you did mention that there's a certain date where the DNA that was taken for ancient DNA samples in Egyptian mummies were contaminated. Hence, okay, why there is why STR values that predict haplogroup R1B for T King Tut. However, it was mentioned that data from controlled DNA provided with chemical for DNA analysis refers to an unknown European sample and male staff members also supplied for comparison. In 2017, DNA fingerprinting for the lab members was carried out to exclude the presence of staff DNA contamination. So that was refuted or debunked based off of what your comment is. So although Razi would be a professional and somebody who may be considered an expert, it doesn't mean he's perfect. That doesn't mean maybe he forgot, maybe it slipped his mind, and maybe he just made a random comment. You know, because when people come on my channel, they respect my channel so much, man. That oh, golf, you got all the experts. So all the experts must be correct, but they only agree with them when they agree with, with something that they say. So I just wanted to point that out. Go ahead, my brother. 
Yeah, the 2017 study, right? Mm -hmm. That was actually the quote from the 2017 study. And that's the three samples that people don't like because they said, oh, no, those samples don't belong to um, the ancient Egyptians. Those are the that's the paper right there. Or yeah, the no. Is that the one? Are you talking about or no? Are you talking about? OK, Gad, 2017. Mm -hmm. OK. What, what uh, was the question, though? Like, what was this? Was there anything in particular? He said, um, hold on, let me scroll up back to his comment. Yes, Jim, but Garfi brought in a geneticist who said that was the result of contamination from white Europeans. He's talking about what Razib Khan said. You already addressed it. And that's what I read. Uh, yeah, uh, ex no, exactly. Um, but I would say this for Razib Khan, right? If we do go to the 2017 paper, they may mention um, that they didn't really know. It's the ancient um, Egyptian mummy genome suggests an increase of sub-Saharan African ancestry in post-Roman um, periods. They may mention that they didn't know that they can um, extract ancient DNA. So that I do believe Razib Khan is, um, he's, he has a point right there because that was made mention in 2017. All right, let me let me let me deal with this black to Egypt guy, because Raw Bond takes me this earlier. This is the problem with us right now, right? This is the problem with this community, and how pseudo they get. Ain't none of that in a scientific journal. That's just wishful thinking. When you were talking about E one B one A and the NevGen, he don't realize what NevGen is. He has no idea at all. Now look at this guy right now. Only way Ramesses III is anything other than E one B one A is when you take away important data, which is unscientific. All right, before we do that, you remember earlier we talked about the Russian vaults? Now look at what this guy wrote. The Russian vaults, long shrouded in mystery and secrecy, have recently been opened to reveal a stunning collection of religious icons that depict Jesus as a person of African descent. These icons, dating back centuries, offer a unique perspective on the portrayal of one of the most iconic figures in Western art and Christianity. This is the reason why they have hidden so much from us long before we were enslaved they saw something in us that was so powerful that they could not explain it and today they hide who we really are out of fear a fear that one day that power will awaken again continue to teach and spread knowledge be on the right side of history be the very reason that the next messiah is born the emergence of black jesus iconography in russian art challenges the traditional eurocentric representations of jesus that have dominated religious imagery for centuries. This discovery not only sheds light on the diversity and inclusive, inclusivity of Christian iconography, but also raises important questions about the whitewashing of historical figures and the impact of racial bias in art. Now, ladies and gentlemen, and then Rob on continue with this guy. Well, let me let me just say this to say to everybody, everybody who's watching, you see why the Russian icon conversation is so important? You see why I got to show it that Putin didn't say anything? Everybody is jumping on the bandwagon now. Everybody. Whether they are committed, whether they are Egyptomaniac or not. They, they got to jump on it. Go ahead, my brother. Read that. Make it a little bigger. Oh, they don't like this research right here. They hate this one. Go ahead, Biblical DNA. Unmute your mic. No, my bad. Despite their potential to address research questions relating to population migrations, genetic studies of ancient Egyptian mummies and skeletal material remain rare. Although research on Egyptian mummies helped to pioneer the field of ancient DNA research, with the first reported retrieval of ancient human DNA. Since then, progress has been challenged by issues surrounding the authentication of the retrieved DNA and potential contaminations inherent to the direct PCR method. See, I believe this is what Razib Khan was speaking about. And so I'm not, there is no knocking Razib Khan when he said that. However, when you actually read those studies of Ramses III to in common, it doesn't say that. It says the, the, the lab. They made sure to avoid contamination. Mm. 
Yeah. Furthermore, the potential DNA preservation in Egyptian mummies was met with general skepticism. The hot Egyptian climate, the high humidity levels in many tombs and some of the chemicals used in mummification techniques, in particular sodium carbonate, all contribute to DNA uh, degradation, uh, degradation and are thought to render the long term survival of DNA in Egyptian mummies improbable. So I find that interesting that in 2017, they were speaking about this, but they were able to do the Y chromosome for, for Ramses III and Unknown Man Eve back in 2011 and 2012. Experimental DNA decay rates in papyri have also been used to question the um, um, validity, validity and general re reliability of reported ancient Egyptian DNA results. The recent genetic analysis of King Two and Common's family is one of the latest controversial. This is what Razib Khan was talking about: controversial studies that gave rise to this extensive scholarly debate. New data obtained with high throughput sequencing methods had the potential to overcome the methodological, methodological and contamination issues surrounding the PCR method and could help settle the debate surrounding ancient Egyptian DNA preservation. However, the first high throughput sequences obtained from ancient Egyptian mummies were not supported by rigorous authenticity um, and contamination tests. There you go. This is what Razib Khan was talking about. Mm, thank you for that. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, and goals, you still there, bro? Yeah, I'm right here. I ain't going nowhere. I'm listening in. Are you finishing presenting? Because I know Kyle wanted to bring some stuff. No, no, no. Um, I mean that, that that I mean I mean I'm I, I mean I don't know if biblical finish, but I was just gonna add on to what he's saying. I want him to read I want him to read that email from um the guy who was who was one of the people that was dealing with um Ramesses the third DNA, and I want him to read what Zawi uh, Zawi Hawass told him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hold on, look at this. Stacy Bates have a, have a legitimate um, question. Sounds like big scam to me, but I could be wrong. Seems like they're changing it to fix their narrative. Not actually, they're the ones that predicted E1B1A, but they see a flaw in the method. And what happens, Stacy, if somebody's checking, if you're committing a crime and somebody said the person had a certain amount, had a certain DNA, wouldn't you want the DNA to be expanded to be anybody in America? Could be it could be their DNA. It could be from A to Z. You wouldn't mm. want it to be from A to L. You want it to be A to Z because if it's A to L, you might fit that person. But if you do A to Z, it fits more people, and that vindicates you. So that's basically what they're doing. They're expanding it for it to be a certain reading on the next next what is it next gen, next next gen, which is mm. a better it's a better technology. It's more updated. Than the Whitney Athy predictor from 2012. That's all it is. That's the simplest way I could put it. It's like you having from A to L, but now you have from A to Z. And that's what it is. That's all it is. But what happened is 23andMe benefited the most from this because how many kits did they sell to African Americans based off of them saying you have a paternal ancestor from Egypt? How many people say that they, how many videos we have on internet right now? I'm connected to Egypt. How many? Because of E1B1A. So 23andMe benefited the most. That's why I say EB, E1B1A, 23andMe exposed. That's why I put that in the topic. Because that's what the problem is. I want to touch on one thing real quickly here in this, um, in the Wikipedia article of the, um, the genetics on ancient Egyptians. Um, Hold on one second. Let me see if I find something here. <clears throat> Hold on one second here. We have, what is this? Pop affiliator. Are you looking for the Saw Kieta? I think you just passed it. No, not that one. Not that one. Okay. Right here, this one. 
Are you familiar with this one, um, Ngozi? Where Ngozi at? The genetic study of ancient Egyptian human remains dating from the pre-dynastic period to the early Islamic period. This is what I was talking about, Fortune. This one was from the conference um, last year, September, presented by that lady. You know her name, my brother. Oh, uh, Alexandria Massour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just released the paper, by the way, for those listening in. A new ancient Egyptian um, paper was released. Well, they have like I believe it's sixteen samples that's on the it, that's in the paper. But I think they only were able to sequence um, five or two of them. It's from this. It's from this one, or from the um, from a different study. Is that the one I emailed you? I emailed you. Um, I don't think it's this. Study. This one is about the um the twenty five Egyptian individuals dating from the pre dynastic period to the Coptic period. Nah, because they just published it today. It's oh, well, no, it's they they just one. published it. Yeah, yeah. yeah look, um, at, look, at, look at this study though. Look at this study because you remember everybody's beefing about the two thousand seven. I got the email. So this one here from the archaeological sites, Asiot, Atmin, Deir El Bahira, Deir El Bat Medina, Thebes. Thebes, <laughs> the Valley of the Kings, and the Gebelin. These samples displayed an mtDNA haplogroup diversity similar to the samples from the 2017 study, providing further evidence for shared maternal ancestries between who? Western Eurasian or North African populations and ancient Egyptians. So, because remember, with the, the, the main complaint with 2017 study is that this study is just one area, right? Which is um, where is it at? Where is it at? Where is it? Yeah, right here. Is right here. One area in the middle of Egypt. But look at these areas that's covered over here. Asiot, Atmin. Deir El Bara, Thebes is Thebes in um, northern Egypt or southern southern? I mean, well, not is it in northern Egypt? I don't think so. The Valley of the Queens and the Gebelin, we could look them up. You know what I'm saying? But just showing, I, I, I'm just saying, based on these results, I'm just saying it seems like there's a lot of mixture within the culture. Not of Kemet because Kemet is only the the black, the quote unquote black land. And you have Desheret. So you have people that live all over ancient Egypt. All right? But anyway, I'll move on from this. I'll talk about that another time. All right. Kyle, you wanted to say something, Ngozi? Yeah, and to, it's not, this definitely is not a scam. Like I said, you can read on my community post and that video that I tagged Brother Garfield in. That's the video of Dr. Gad. And he, um, um reiterates what exactly he emailed me he says that they're going going to be going over those ancient samples again using next generation sequencing it's definitely not a scam though or trying to change a narrative or anything like that i'm trying to be as unbiased as possible unbiasedness yeah yeah because stacy betts asked a very good question that everybody concerned about it's the same people that predict the first one is the same people working on this one these are the experts so the guy that's saying that that raw bond screenshot is um I'm going to be very careful moving forward. Garfield, what the consensus the scholars say. Yeah, that that's the same guy. Same guy, it's the same guy. All right. So let's move on from here. Um the, yeah, yeah, the, the, the 23andMe sold millions to African Americans because they want to tell you that you are connected to Egypt because they know you love Egypt. So they say, hey, you related to the people in Egypt. Here you go. Yep, that's how they got you. We need to put a lawsuit, man, a class action lawsuit against 23andMe. False advertising. I'm serious. But go ahead, Kyle. What are you saying? No, I, I, I'm actually, um, I, I applaud uh, Biblical DNA for his, um, his grasp on the phylogenetics and the work that he's done to even understand it at the level that he's on um same with uh ngozi 
um earlier in the conversation uh i know we were talking about like the sub plays and the forward development of the field based on new methods of testing and i just i was just trying to show at that point in time this particular uh phylogenetic uh genetic chart so that it could kind of reinforce what biblical dna was saying and this kind of reinforces it you know when we go with E1, E1B1A, E1, E1B. And I think we had mentioned at one point in time EP177. And it could very well be misconstrued, you know, based on a, a misnaming or a mislabeling uh, of a haplogroup that one group can be placed in another group on, on accident because the tools weren't available at that point in time. And I just kind of want to point that out that we don't have the tools to fellow to to further develop and narrow down in um a, a, a str analysis that you could mislabel some of these groups and the new naming nomenclature would be a better fit for these conversations so we can understand em96 uh 147 em33 are individual subclays that have distinct markers that don't necessarily cross over and I think that we should stick to the markers that we're more familiar with, the clays that come on the E1B1A by way of EB38 and the split. Um, a lot of us come right here, you know, right down EB38, and we don't go down M M2. But a lot of us also do. Me personally, I come M M180, and I I go to uh, EP252. So like. We, we got to understand that these things are not the same thing as uh, E1B1A, the same, the, the, I guess the, uh, the labels that's given to Ramsey's um, just based on scientific data. And we got to understand that when we're making these claims that there, this, this is a long time. This is 17, 18, 19,000 years. This is a long, a long, really, really, really long time to try to claim someone as being your ancestor. This is prior to any West African civilization. This is prior to Egypt. This is prior to Sumer. This is prior to all of these things. And I think we really got to take a step back and understand what we actually are saying when we claim a haplogroup is our cousins and descendancy because we have independent lineages that occurred for thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands of years that we can associate with ourselves with rather than jumping over our ancestors to claim some mega civilization. You know, I, I think they're just kind of ridiculous. So I, I digress and I, I appreciate your time. Hey, can you share my other, um, the screen that I have, Brother Garfield? There we go. So this is, um, so when I emailed um, Dr. Howard, let me go ahead and zoom in. When I emailed um, Dr. Howard, he told me to go get his book, to go buy his book. This is for um, very verbatim. He told me, you can find the answers in my book. Literally, that's what he told me. You can find the answers in my book. So what I did is I took my behind to the University of Central Florida because I lived right there. And I seen exactly, this is exactly what his book says. In order to discern the relationship between unknown man E and Ramses III, a genetic analysis was performed. DNA was extracted from bone samples of the two mummies according to the protocols described earlier. 16 Y chromosomal short tandem repeats and eight polymorphic microsatellites of the nuclear genome were amplified using AMP F um, 4 slash STR Y filler I identifier and the AMP F 4 slash STR mini filer kit according to the protocols of the manufacturer. The genetic analysis revealed identical haplotypes of the Y chromosome in both individuals. The testing of the po um, polymorphic microsatellite Loki provided um, concordant results in at least one allele of each marker. And that's what 
that one is talking about the um the ys or the autosomal the microsatellites which you know famous people like to run through pop affiliator which wasn't you wasn't meant for that especially concerning ancient dna but i digress and just to show the citation on what I'm talking about, showing that it's talking about the original study that I read earlier from revisiting um, the Haram. Let me go ahead and go to the citation for y'all. Because I know a lot of people don't have this book or never seen it. So let me go ahead and show it. If you could change the, um, or Brother Garfield, are you there? Here we go. Revisiting number 47, revisiting the Haram conspiracy. That's it. So they didn't bring no new data. Not in um, 2021. If you want me to go over that paper too, Brother Garfield. All okay. right, carry on, brother. Carry on. Yeah, I was hoping, I was, thought I went, I was alone in here. No, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, Anything else y'all want me to touch on? I got a lot of stuff that I, I was going to go over, like, you know, um, the YHRD, where they, where people can fall on, um, find the data that's available for specific haplotypes. Um, family tree DNA, we covered that. If anything, if anybody's got a question, um, maybe from that 2021 study, um, they basically um, were going over the same thing that was already done previously in 2012. They were still promoting that, you know, it's outdated data um, because we add these haplogroup group predictor didn't have the data that's available now. Well, okay, so we see obviously there's errors um showing for e1 mm -hmm. b1a so which one is it more likely to be is it more likely to be r1 a form of r1b more likely or e1 b1b no i wouldn't choose any of those because we don't know we simply don't know based off of those um ycrs you can read what the the creator of of nevgen what he said about the situation you can remember this is a guy that's actually in bioinformatics he created the nevgen calculator he knows what he's talking about so if Let's go ahead and present that. Let's do that so we can see. Mm -hmm. And just to set the record straight, I never said Ramses the Third belonged to have a group R1B. What I said is what I showed earlier that if you choose subclades of R1B, it, it gives you a probability of um, 100. All right. My thoughts about supposed ram a haplotype of Ramses III and its prediction by admin published March 22nd, 2024. Now he initially published this last year, but I don't know. I guess he did something to it. I don't know if he changed it up. I don't know. At least twice we received emails about Nevgen's prediction of haplotype of Ramses III. His haplotype is supposed to be this in Nevgen format. So this is the family tree DNA order right there. Predicting it in general level of predictor, I got this. And this is exactly what I showed earlier. Probability of unsupported subclade, 100%. Warning, values of fitness are too small. Probably is error in order of STRs. That's exactly what I did earlier. I'm going to go nuts with this notification thing. All right. Picture I got for top haplogroup, J1A2A1A2, P58. Looks like this. You can see most of values look like being out of normal. By position of red on vertical line, it fits into it like elephant fits into glass shop. So he's basically letting Gozi back in. Letting Gozi back in, Garfield. He's basically like you know saying that these YSDRs, um, there's something's wrong with them, right? 
From it, I suspected some values from this haplotype might be random, i.e. wrong. So now this is an expert. This is the person that created this haplogroup predictor. So he's saying that these YSDRs are random or IE wrong. So few days ago, I wrote code with, which generates random haplotypes using the same SDRs, which are part of Ramsey's um, haplotype. I generated 200 such haplotypes and an average top fitness of predictions of all those random haplotypes was 0.12%, which is something lower than 0.43% for supposed haplotype of Ramsey's third. Here are some examples or samples of them. These are the samples he came up with. Now, for this, I have no idea why he did this. I, when, when I did a video on this, I said he wasted his time personally. All he had to say is um, from the data that's available, those YCRs for Ramsey's third, they don't calculate to E1B1A. That's all he had to say. But he didn't, he, he did, did this, made a, a code which took him probably all day to do. Then I made several other sets of random hoplotypes, which contain from one to 13 real values, randomly chosen, which will be taken from real haplotype, which belongs to E1B1A, V38, M4231, and the rest of values are random numbers. Real haplotype, which is used to borrow values from it is 13. As you can see, this 13, now, what I was speaking about earlier, 8 isn't really a DYS393 value that people carry. It's very, I've never seen it. The lowest I've seen, I believe, is 9. It is very rare to carry an 8. And there's other YSTR values that for Ramsey's third are just, you know, very strange. They're very odd when it comes to YSTRs in data. Here you can see table of average fitnesses for top prediction for all haplotypes of partially random generated haplotypes, 200 of haplotypes in each group. Groups are sorted by number of values which are taken from real haplotypes. All right. And Brother Garfield, can you, um, I'm going to say, can I give you this link to make sure it gets put in the, um, in the description too, every link that I shared and even more stuff. So um, the audience and the future watchers can have all this material and information. From table, you can see that top fitness of supposed Ramsey's haplotype 0.43% fits between average fitnesses 0.33% and 0.58% with two and three real values and all other random values. So it seems to me that most probably only two to four values of Ramsey's haplotype are real and all others are wrong random values. Unless Ramsey's third belong to major haplogroup, group, which is not present in modern humanity or is very, very rare. And this is what I mentioned earlier. If Ramsey's third has um, who is, has who is, been who is, who is communicating this with you? Huh? Who is communicating this with you? No, this is the author of the Nevgen, the rant, the haplogroup predictor. This is the author of this um tool. This so is he what he said. said on, he said yes. that the, mm -hmm. the haplotype, the two to four values of Ramsey's haplotype are real. All others are wrong. Correct. Ramsey the third belong to. A major haplogroup which is not present in modern humanity or is very, very rare. If yes. Ramsey's has been not proven by SMPs to belong to E1B1A from its STR, I cannot deduce anything for certain. But that's what the, that's what um God and the other guys are about to do right now. Right? Yeah, that's the whole uh, next generation sequencing. Um, they said he said in this video, it's not me just making that up on the emails that I received um, from him. He said it in the video. You can watch the video. He says it at the very end of that video that they're going to be uh, revisiting old mummies with next generation sequencing. 
I want them to do all of them over. Every one of them, I want them to do over. I agree, including the R one Bs, the three, um, the three samples in two thousand seventeen. Every single one of them. I agree. But I will tell you this though, the report from last year and the new one, you're gonna see a lot of women with the H marker, and even with the two thousand seventeen report that people said they don't like, I, I tell you right now. It's going to cause a problem in people's lives because these samples are from all over Egypt, from 4,000 BC to the Coptic period, and it comes up as the same results when they use that 2017 stuff. And it's from different areas they're collected, from Thebes, from the can't say, oh, it goes from, from this area near the desert, so it don't count, or it's the middle of Egypt, you don't, you didn't count the south. Thebes hey, is Garfield, not the hey, north. Garfield, they got higher resolution. So the new higher resolution when they come out, they're going to give you a better idea of who these people are. And mm -hmm. yeah, a, a lot of those Eurasian DNA signatures been in North Africa. So, so, so when you look at like H and U6, that stuff's been there. It's been there. So I... Mm, you cut out and goes in. Go ahead, Biblical DNA. No, I just want to make sure um, people get this video. This is the video I'm talking about, so there's no confusion. What were you saying, goes in? So the high no, I, no, I, I was just saying it's okay if it hurt people's feelings. A lot of your has been in North Africa. That's just what it is. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Right. I don't want to play this on Garfield on your channel because I don't want to get um for you to get any strikes. But this is the video that people can go to to watch. Dr. Uh, yeah, Gad. And this is it. By the way, just to be clear, this this is the guy that did the E one B one A four. Show me that you had another image of of um of um Ramesses. The set. You know what? Don't worry about it. I got it because I did send it to the raw bar. Hold on, let me put. I'm gonna put it on the screen. Hold on one second. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep speaking. No, this is. I just want to know. Uh, let people know you can watch. They can watch this video and hear everything he says in this video. Um, I can I can scroll to where it says predicted. Now, remember, predicted, as you can see, not confirmed, predicted. This video was released 11 months ago. You still see predicted, not confirmed. So there was no confirmation that he belonged to E1B1A. And I, I, no, there is, it says predicted right there. There's no, is no confirmation, it's predicted. Right there, predicted. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So for 23 and me to be um, showing that people, you know, belong to that and they carry the same haplogroup group that Ramsey's third, how can you carry a predicted haplogroup group from somebody else? That don't make any sense. And this is also, it's not just Ramsey's the third, y'all. It's Amenhotep the third, Akhenaten, and Tutankhamen, and Yuya. And, and, and that right there. Europeans, the, the, the Europeans who say, "Oh, I share Y chromosome with Tut." So don't yeah. think that don't think that biblical DNA just shooting that so-called black. He's talking about all of them because Europeans right. are doing it too. Right, and you can't find these are very wise these YSTRs. Um, I I'll take the time to find out, but I think I've done it maybe one time where I try to find Europeans carrying these YSTRs exactly like that, and I I did not find it. A, a biblical DNA. Yeah. You know about the black Egypt crazy people, but what do you think about the, the racist white supremacist people who use that to turn around and attack uh, black people saying they never did anything? Because you know black people try to claim Egypt, but when you got the white people that try to say you never been anywhere and, you know, that troll them. What do you think about them? What do yeah, you know so DNA? what I tell them is, do you know the fourth dynasty um, Egyptians? Do you know their white chromosome? Do you know their admixture, their ancient admixture? Um, do you have anything to do with the Neolithic Levantine populations, Nutufian, a pre Neolithic B? Do you have anything to do with the Iberian Merugians, Tafrilat, or possibly um, the pastoralists? In, in Kenya or East Africa or Kadruka, you know, did you have anything to do with that? No. So you don't, you don't have nothing to do with these people either. Um, the later dynasties, yeah, they might have been mixed, but when the pyramids were built, weren't, wasn't that the fourth dynasty? 
<laughs> and, and the bottom line, yo, the Egyptians were, uh, uh, they were their own people. They were a unique branch of people that live in that portion of Northeast Africa. And they was not European, nor were they black Africans. That's just what it is. People don't want to hear it, but it is what it is. And, you know, I can only postulate right now, though, Brother Biblical, that if 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 if, if these if these people were if I can say if they if they because I'm not saying I'm I'm not saying I'm right because I don't know what market they were we just we can only base things off the available data we're not the professionals mm -hmm. but we know how to but we know how to read the professionals work so my whole thing is if I can base something and I can postulate right now and I think that they were mainly clays of EB12 that's common in Egypt you know mm -hmm. and probably some tea. Hey, um, brother Garfield, can you show that email that I sent you where um the the geneticist says that he's gonna um extract the Y chromosome from those S and P's or you have that right? Um, which S and P somewhere? I sent you. I think I sent it to you on your phone. Um, if you can check your hey, phone before, before we go any further just to let everybody know my daughter has a book out it's called poems to my younger self and i'm going to put the link it's just ten dollars for anybody want to support my daughter for her fir first book ever she's oh, following book. His footsteps it's called the poems to my younger self shanika cuthbert poems to my younger self it's right there in the chat you could click on the link and you could sub you could um purchase a copy it's just ten dollars just support your brother's daughter and um, do your thing. All right? No strings attached, brother. Just support. That's what we do. Support each other. Um, let me see if I could find that link that you're talking about. Um, do, 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 do. You remember what's the name of it? I sent you a picture on, on your text message. Oh, my text message. All right. Yeah, it's, it's the paper that they came out with today that he's going to be... Um, He's gonna be the sequencing, like he's gonna be running it through the BAM file, the, the I think the fast day. If not, I can um send you the link from the Facebook. Yeah, send page. me the link. Send me the link from the Facebook. Don't send it to. Don't get it. To put it in the chat. Or okay. put it in the back. Put it in the back chat. I got you. It's from t um Ted Kindles. I got you. Yo, hey Garfield, uh, Mister Seven O Seven, I believe his name is Bricks. He wants to come on and ask some questions. If you, want yeah, to. yeah, 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 I'm about to turn it off anyway. I'm about to get out of here. So we okay. had a question too. Anybody um, that want to answer Tay's question? What's yeah, the question? Hit, hit the link, fam. He just had a question about his haplogroup being EM85. And what thunder go, man? I thought this was thunder show. I'm not tired of us, man. Tired of us. <laughs> thunder, like, you know I what think, I'm saying? Uh, I think Bennigan's was having a buffet or something. That's what it was. He, them, hey, them, hey, them he went out there. He, he went out there to Buckhead. Yeah. Yeah, he, the butter breads, man. They come out hot, man. They be fresh, man. I get it. Yup. They was having bring your bring your white girl to the Masonic Lodge day at the uh, temple. Oh man, <laughs> <Chill out>, man. <laughs> <laughs> this big girl, man. How you been, 93? I ain't talked to you in a second, man. You good? Oh, uh, man, I'm good, man. You know, credit score approaching 800. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know, nigga didn't grew half an inch. So, you know what I'm saying? This nigga hey. has been elevates. <laughs> hey, Garf Garfield, it's in, the, it's in the private chat. It's in the private chat, brother Garfield. All right, cool. No problem. Hey man, ain't nothing, ain't nothing wrong with putting in two pair of insoles, man. I ain't finna hold you. I know me and Garfield gonna be shoulder to shoulder next time I go to New York. <laughs> I'm be like, yo, <laughs> hell yeah, yeah man. man. What, what you been on, Kyle? How you doing, man? Um, you still what, what? What's what's with the new tech? I know you had you showed some kind of illegal kind of shit you had when you was you uh, was uh. Stop it! Just stop! Just stop! Just stop! Just stop! Just stop. 
it's it's for it's for pen testing, man. It's for oh, pen- man, this ninety three guy, man. He's a sub. Man, I'm not bad. No Tesla. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, be oh yeah, I can, I can definitely crank up a Tesla, man. <laughs> go ahead, bro. Go ahead, bro. It's on the screen. Biblical DNA, where you at? I kicked you off. Yeah, no, I'm here. Un- 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 online band files from 17 ancient Egyptians from the N- Nakata period to the um, Byzantine era have just appeared in the ENA. I am lining and merging the BAM files and calling the Ys right now. So so just so people know what ENA is, ENA is the, let me go ahead, is the European Nucleotide Archive. It's where the studies, all peer reviewed published studies they um they publish their the genomes of the samples found in the study. Hey, I'm glad I'm glad you brought up something that goes you that it's not like you're going after E1B1, you're going after the R1B samples too, because we want everything to be right and exact. We don't want no half-ass scholarship. No, no. So what happened is E1B1A is the only link that African Americans have with Egypt. They haven't been a matter of fact. In all of Israel, in the Bronze Age to the Iron Iron One and Iron Two, we have not found any E one B one A. Am I correct? Biblical DNA. I don't think we found any. I think we What's found that? E1B1A one B sample, but we haven't found any E one B one A in Canaan. No. Oh. Hold on. Absolutely not. Nope. For those who claim Israel, you don't find no E one B one A in Can- in the Canaan. Israelite area from 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 um what you call it from from in the Bronze Age from 3200 BC all the way down to 600 BC you don't find nothing you, in in Egypt the only samples you have is the Ramesses III and his lineage because if it's Ramesses III lineage that means his sons because he had sons who was Ramesses the fourth the fifth and the grandson who was I think the sixth and seventh all the way down to the eleventh is connected to him somehow possibly. So at the end of the day, Ramesses the third being E one B one A is huge, but you know what, family? Let's do it correctly. And for the R one B, I don't. It don't sit good with me as a black man that R one B is the markers for King Tut and all these guys. So do it over. Let's find out what the truth is instead of twenty three and me trying to convince us to buy mm-hmm. um stuff to find out that we tw- we we E one B one A. Oh, we related to the pharaohs. You have guys doing interviews on TV stations. I found out I was related to the pharaohs. Oh, get out of here, man! <laughs> and, yeah. and you sit out in the tooth. You sit out in the toothians. Get reclassified as E3B, right? Oh, yeah, they're man. they're all E1B1B. Um, well, the ones that were able to be sequenced because not all of them were able to be sequenced because ancient DNA and humidity and you know all of that preservation of ancient DNA. So the one that was E1B1 that got re- that got classified yeah. as e3b the, yeah they're all e1b1b that's what i sent you um the other day if you want to share that i know you should hate that yeah should hate that part oh man um can you send can you show that other link that i yeah posted I in, in the back chat just so um somebody got r garfield i ain't gonna say who it is but somebody came back r with a whole presentation on how e1b1b e1b1a is the israelite dna you know who i'm talking about yeah is he it is does does he go to does he go to church he better he better start (laughs) not only garfield can't stand right let me be clear wait wait what, what are we talking about who is this Nah, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about these uh, guys. <laughs> nah, I want to know. They got um, some. Ain't got time. For nah, we ain't, th- these are facts, Garfield. Somebody that claimed that E one B one A is the Israelite half of group. Is Fox News facts or is it real? These, these are Fox. I got, I got the screen. Talking about facts. old Yap Gang, old Yap Gang, not new yeah, Yap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he got his he DNA done, and he like, oh, all yeah. the time. But I want all the DNA in Egypt to be done properly. I mean, not from 2017. I'm talking from way before 2012 and all the stuff with the R1B. I want him to do all of it over 
so we could get it right. Don't fall for the okie doke. Oh, 23 and me says I'm paternally ancestor. We got a paternal ancestor in Ramesses the third. You ain't related yeah. to the third family. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. A matter of fact, Ashkenazi Jews, a lot of them have some E1B1A, one one right? A couple of them have E1B1A. Yeah. 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 So, 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 so does that mean the Ashkenazi Jews are the real Egyptians because they have E1B1A? No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come on, we got it. We got it. We got to dead all of that, man. All right, I didn't even get to go into um the resurrection and all that teachings, but the first of the video was about Putin, the black icon, black icon, fake AI voice, Hebrew Israelites exposed, and E1 B1A 23 and me, Egyptomaniacs exposed. Hope y'all had fun. Uh, Mr. 707, y'all gonna have fun and do what y'all do. All right, but we're gonna have fun all day, every day when we're over here. All right. Peace and love to everybody, man. Support poems to my younger self. And the link is in the chat. Peace and love to y'all, man. Have a beautiful evening. This is Brother Garfield. Much love, much respect. Any more questions? Hey, EM85. Oh, that's what Tay had. Africans are E1B1B. You know what? Max Shash, um, a couple of African Americans are E1B1B. There's a couple. That's there. All right. Um, yeah. Oh, let me see. Let me see. JJ7000 in the chat. What's up, bro? Come on home, man. Put that put that tour rod down and get you a, a kitchen cloth. I <laughs> <laughs> I I was gonna say real quick, we can show um we can show with at these happen group predictor the paper that was published for that. I don't think we showed that just so the audience can see everything. And if not, we can just put it in the um the description, Garfield. Oh, this is the question I wanted to answer. What happened to all the black people of Egypt? Where'd they go? Who said they went anywhere? And who said they were all black people? All right. And what are black people? Exactly. <laughs> what are you talking about because black people could be um, I'll be sure looking type of dudes, Chris Harris type of looking dudes. So what do you <laughs> oh, think? Man, come on, bro. Come on, what, what, Y'all what, be what, good what, enough, man. <laughs> I'll be sure Elder Barge is considered black. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, you, it's the oh, fact, I mean, man. Black. So, I mean, what, what are we saying here? What are you, we really are saying? You talking here? about old school Michael Jackson black or the <laughs> <old> <laughs> Muhammad Black, or what do you what do you, what do you, what do you, what do you get that right now? What, what are you talking about? Yeah, you gotta pick a black man. <laughs> talking about Ramesses the third with that aculine nose black, or what are you talking about right now? Like, Yo, this is did he have, right? did he have hair Garfield? I think no, he was that's like Ramesses the second. That's Ramesses. Oh, II. okay, yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah he was. He was a second, second, right? Okay, he was a character. Biblical top, man. Yeah, you gotta, I'm here. You got to get Tate. You got to get Tate. Tate said his happy hoop is EM85. He wants to know about it. He wants to know that. What hold on is. one second. Before we go there, this is Ramesses. Just a little. Hold on. Let me answer Lucas, bro. Let me give him a respect. What happened to all the black people of Egypt, my brother? There was no mass migration. Amer Egypt is like America. You don't see all immigrants are killing themselves just to get here. That's why everybody used to come into Egypt, not leave Egypt. The only people that left Egypt was the Kushite kingdom. When their soldiers were chased out. And guess what? Guess who helped to do that? The Egyptians. Because the Egyptians hated the Kushites. They don't tell you that on the other channels. They don't tell you that the, if the ancient Egyptians and them was all one and all lovey-dovey black people. They, they, they paid the Greeks to get rid of the, get rid of the, um, the, the Kushites out of Egypt. After the 25th dynasty. So those Egyptians remained in the land. You're talking about 6 million people. Where did they go? What are you talking about? They went to West Africa, Dr. Garfield. Come on, that, that's how that's how we got the Yoruba and the Igbo. You know uh, that. You still, got, you still got the Sudanese right where they was, too. They were, they were in and out of Egypt as well. <laughs> well, see, that's, we, we don't have to worry about facts here, uh, 93. Let's, let's talk about the, the delusion. They all went to West Africa, and they established... Oyo. He was crazy. Arad Muhammad the Black. Y'all funny. The Egyptians hated the Kushites. 
Really? Really, my brother? Why, why did they treat the Kushites the way they did? A matter of fact, they named them Kashites, what we call Kushites. The Egyptians named it. The Nubians never call themselves that name. Where does you the <laughs> name what people call them? They never call themselves Kushites. Why are we That's calling right. them? Had them niggas kneeling down with ropes around them their that? arms. That's how I know <laughs> African signs don't know what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hey Amen, because ancient Egypt was a whole nation for the Albi shores and princesses. Yep. Don't worry mm. about it, man. I got some for them, all them crazy people. By the way, this is um Sunshine Lucas Brown. The Arab so-called invasion was never an invasion because the Egyptian soldiers welcomed them. There's two times they got invaded by the Arabs. The first time the Arabs came in and killed a lot of them. The second time they welcomed the Arabs in and joined their army. Did y'all know that? Mm -mm. The Egyptians joined their army. And guess what the Egyptians did? Remember I just said, what did I just say, Kyle, about them and the Kushites? They did what? They welcomed me in, man. Come on. Come they on hated home. the Kushites, right? You know what they did? They yeah. captured the Nubians when the Arabs came in and gave them to Arabs as slaves. The Egyptians did that. Hey, so but Garfield, check this out, though. The Arabs came and conquered. No, they didn't. They were welcomed in with with open arms and say, come on in and take over from the Byzantine Empire. Come on in, my brother. But this, this, this is the part that really get me, Garfield, is that we had, like, e Egypt was based on the modern modern borders of Egypt today. We don't, under, like, a lot of people in these conversations don't understand that Egypt would have included modern-day Palestine. Modern-day, oh, like... No, 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 no. What you mean, no? No, no, sir. You're not going to you're not gonna get me, no, 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 get me out of that. No, man, come on, man. Like th that it, was part it, of Egypt, it, bro. It, um, they, they, when the Arabs came in, Shefrin, they welcomed the Arabs in the second time because the Arabs came in twice. And whoever wants this paper, let me give it to y'all right now, too. Let me put this paper in the chat. You will see that in that army, you had Persians, Byzantine, Egyptians, all of them joined the Arabs and continue to conquer the world. The Egyptians joined their army. They welcomed them in the second time mm -hmm. when they came in. And then when the Arabs came in, they conquered, they captured the Nubians and gave them, worked out a deal with them and gave the Nubians as slaves to the Arabs for over mm -hmm. 600 years. Don't uh -oh. tell me not about no history in Egypt. These people, nope. they are liars. They are all liars. Don't trust none of them. All these so-called blackity black scholars, they lie for Egypt and try to say, hey, it's an African-American group. This is what they want to prove. They want to say it's an African-American group and we come from Egypt. No, we're not. We're not Israelites. We're not Ethiopians. We're not none of them people. We are West and Central Africans. The Egyptians hated the Kushites. Let me, let me, let me read an article for you real quick. Go to, go to, let me read something for you right now. Why would they pay the Greeks to help them to get rid of the, the, when, the, when the Assyrians had taken over? Why would they have to get their Syrians out, pay the Greeks to get rid of the Kushites? Why would they do that? Mm. Why would mm -hmm. they do that? And then you find the Egyptians. Just to know that the Egyptians stayed in the land, guess what happened? The Egyptians who held the post, they like one was a mayor or a senator, right? He remained as mayor and senator throughout the Kushite kingdom coming in, throughout the Assyrians coming in. They didn't go nowhere. The only people that ran away was Taharka and the, and the Kushite, the Kushite king um, army. Because the Assyrians, they did, they, they did a hell of a job with them. But they did fight them till the end and Taharka ran away. And when he ran away, the Egyptians was happy. They were celebrating when, when the Assyrians took over. They were celebrating like, yeah, take us. That's why Nico became an agent of them. Nico went to Assyria and trained and came back. And he was a puppet king for the Assyrians. Mm -mm. Y'all don't want the true history of Egypt, man. Y'all don't want y'all want that fake blackity black. Everything was all hunky dory. They hated the Kushites. They hated them. And you know what happened? The Kushites hated the Egyptians too. Because remember, between 1500 and 1000 BC, who controlled Nubia or most of it? The Egyptians. They mm. had them under a yoke. Stop mm. this nonsense like they are the same people. They are not. This is why the Greeks separated them. The Greeks said, hey, the, 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 um, the Nubians look like the, the, the southern Ethiopians, which are dark-skinned, and the Egyptians look like the, the, the northern Indians, which are look like the Pakistanis, which are the light-skinned, I'll be sure, types. 
Mm. The, the, they separated them, how they looked, phenotypically, skin tone-wise, everything. So this was xenophobic, not racism. Get out of here, man. The Egyptologist came on and said it. She said that they never left out of Egypt. Everybody came in. There's no mass migration of Egyptians leaving out of the area. This is what this is what Diop taught. And I ain't got Ooh. no PhD like Diop, but he lied and talked about how the Egyptians migrated north-south. Get out of here with that nonsense. Y'all oh, can't come. See, they, they, don't, they won't argue with me because I'm not lying for these Negroes. I'm man, they didn't no they brought back the 2010 oh, Garfield, man. Telling, What's was, going on, I was, man? I was telling Rob Bond last night that Ramesses screwed four of his daughters and had children with them. So, oh. And he's the favorite king of all these Egyptomaniacs. Ramesses II. Ramesses II. Yeah, he screwed his own daughters and had children with them. That's your man. leader. That's yeah. who Dr. York based his life off of. Ramesses II. He had over 100 kids. That's who he Jeez. based his life off. That's who y'all want. That's it. Yeah. Look at the screen. This is him right here. The redhead, the red-headed king. That's him right there. Look at him. Oh, that's look the redhead one right there. Look at the alkaline nose. Look at that. Look at the little fish lips. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Ramesses II. Looking like a guppy. Well, hold on. This is Ramesses II, Mr. E1 B1 Edo. That actually that's looks like Ram that, that actually looks like Rams Ramesses III. This is Ramesses the third. I'm sorry. Yeah. Second, this one is Ramesses the second. Okay. The one at the bottom is Ramesses the second. The one at the top is Ramesses the third. They see the okay. same alkaline nose. They look alike. He looked like he'd been to Epstein Island. Okay. Oh <laughs> hey, that nose is wild, though, for anybody to claim he's Negro. <laughs> nah, he's us. Nah, that nose is just too much for me to even cover. It's us. Hold on a second. Let me find something on, on, on Wikipedia real quick. Let's look at this right here. All right. So this is the citation that um, the Egyptians were using to, you know, predict Ramesses the Third's haplogroup group with hapl um with at this haplogroup group predictor. And so you scroll down here. It says another approach is based on the allele frequencies for each haplogroup group. And how well a given test haplotype fits the pattern of alleles in each haplogroup. group. This approach is outlined below and it has been implemented on a website since October 2004, being used by many people. It allows any number of the family tree DNA set of 37 markers to be entered, and the program returns a goodness of fit score for 10 haplogroups, groups E3A, E3B, G, I1A. I1B, I1C, J2, N3, R1A, and R1B. More than 98% of people of West European extraction fall into one of these 10 haplogroups. While the program is known as a predictor program, it really just provides information on how well the given haplotype fits in the pattern of previous reported STR values for a haplogroup. So what what this is saying is they were using the data that's available, like the data that they had available for STRs to the, to predict, and they even quoted predictor. You know, it's a predict it's a predictor. That's all it is, a prediction. I'm gonna see show one thing real quick to where they were gathering all the information right here. It was only through the establishment of public YSTR databases such as YSearch and YBase. Now, YSearch went out of um, business, I believe, in 2020 or something like that. It's now it's mainly just family tree DNA or 20, yeah, 2019 or 2020. That calculation of the allele frequencies for several haplogroups became possible. You see what I'm saying? These public databases usually have included a field for the haplogroup which were obtained primarily from the family tree DNA prediction algorithm. Just saying. That's it. That's all I got, Brother Garfield. All right, cool. No problem. Mm -hmm. Hold on, don't leave biblical. Yeah, yeah. Um here here you go. This is this is what they were getting all the data from for these YSTRs. So that's that's the data that they had. So 
when family tree DNA, family tree DNA didn't really hit to later on. Like I personally did mine in 2000, um, the end of 2016, I got my results at the beginning of 2017. When did you do yours, um, Garfield? My, which one, which one of them? Your Y DNA on family tree DNA. Family tree, you know what? I don't even, um, I kind of eased off from family tree when I did mine. Mm -hmm. They give your DNA straight to the to the to the feds and police without your permission. So I yep. I kind of threw my shit away. I didn't. I put it so away. that was in 2018, if I remember correctly, is when they um put that on there that they give our information to the local author, you know, the authorities and whatnot. Well, so I'm now glad, was, I'm, I'm glad I don't, I don't do nothing no more. <laughs> but I'm just asking, what year did you do your Y DNA? If you don't mind me asking. Um, I think I did because I know you did. You did Family Tree DNA. So hold on, let me look at my computer real quick for the video. Okay, right here. I totally got it right here. Hold on a second. Let me go to my iCloud. I totally got the videos. The actual videos of when I did the test. Yeah, it's right here. I got it right here. Hold on, I'll show y'all right now. The point is just, you know, most people, you know, a lot of data has come since 2011, 2012. That's, hold, on, that's... Hold, on, hold on, bro. See right here? Okay. I got family tree, mm -hmm. ancestry, genome, my heritage, a couple other ones. So this is the yeah. family tree DNA. Let me see what the date on this is. Okay. Let's see. It's loading. Let me see. Oh man, I look like a boot. I look like a real Hebrew Israelite right now. Look at Garfield back in the days. So this is when I took the family tree DNA. Look at Garfield. This was what date? What date is this? You have to look on the the data, like the, the file description. That's gonna be. In so the, if you right click the file, it should say when you created that file. Later on, from African ancestry DNA, or um. African American DNA or whatever the company is from Rick Kittles. But this one is from Family Tree DNA. Family Tree DNA. I thought I, I had lost the stuff to do the tests, but I actually found the material, which was to, the swabs. I actually found the swabs. So I have two valves. All right. They asked for a specific concept that I got to send in that I filled out. Um, See my date of birth and all that stuff. Yeah. All right. You know, my birthday and the kids sample and all that stuff. All right. So now we do this. We open up the swab. Well, I'm doing it backwards. I'm actually supposed to open the swab from the bottom so it doesn't get contaminated. But then we're at 108. Let me just swab from 115 to 215 on the inside Garfield doing that PCR test mm. <laughs> never read the instruction for this but I pretty much know what to do because I've been taking a bunch of tests All right mm. so it's right here so it says rotate the swab in the middle of the mouth of the cheeks all right so that's what I'm doing <laughs> yo, I'm the worst, yo. I'm bored. I got like 10 of these. I did like 10 tests, yo. I'm bored. I was definitely bored to be doing this craziness. I was bored. But um, I'm trying to see when this was. You should be able to right-click the file, and it should say when, um, if you go to um, get Stop. info, you should yeah, see the year. Hold on. Let me get it right now. Hold on one second. Right. Mm hmm Get info. Uh, you know what? Don't worry about it. We, I'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. I'll yeah, I, I answered you questions. I'll you yeah. Little, so, yeah, I'll get help with this. I'll get help. <laughs> I'll get help. I'll get help. Let me answer this question real quick, Garfield. Y'all hear me? Yeah, you good. 
All right, yeah, so I don't know if the brother's still on because I just looked it up for him. It was EM85. Comes out of EM98, 14,000 BC, which came out of EM75, 32,000 BC, which goes back to EM96, 44,000 BC. And EM96 had two lines, EM75 and ECTS9083. So his line comes out of the 75, which is separate from the line that produced EM, E1B1A. But he still has, uh, his, his particular haplogroup is found in Bantu people. So his come from the other line that came out of EM96, which was EM75. And further down, you get his line, which is EM85. So, yeah. And to further that, if you um, go into a Y full, you do search for E M85, it'll tell you exactly what um, Fortune is talking about. And it'll show you samples from Gambia, Kenya, Congo, and there's a lot of Kenyan samples. So he's really not E1B1A, he's another form of E. Yeah, it's a very rare E1B. I think that would be E like E1B1. It's very rare. Mm -hmm. w which there's a paper or there's a, a post on Family Tree DNA. I can share this and be done. That's what I, I use. That's my source. <laughs> All of mm -hmm. that is coming from Family Tree DNA. If you type in, if you um, do just a Google search for EM85, they have the the lines that it comes from. You can go further back, and then they show the the samples and the countries that they come from. Brother Garfield, let this be like the the dagger to end this Ram Ramesses the third E one B one A. So this is brand new. Like this is February twenty first, twenty twenty four. This is brand new evidence, ancient lineages. A 49,000 year old Brent split in Y DNA haplogroup E confirmed 15 years after initial discovery. Now, this sample, this individual was found in Yemen. Um, it wasn't found in West Africa, it was found in Yemen. And what's so unique about this sample is they can get the, uh, the most recent common ancestor and determine exactly because it, before it was. Um, I would say like a hypothesis or like a theory to hypothesis. Now it's, you know, we got more evidence of when the mutation occurred. Thanks to this sample that they found in Yemen. Here it is. Hadiar al Asari, Family Tree DNA's Arab world account manager contacted the customer who has paternal ancestry from Yemen. Fortunately, he was available and agreed to a research sponsor, Big Y700 upgrade to confirm the lineage in the split. So this is brand new that they were able to confirm um, him belonging to a uh, subclade under EP2, and the same one that Family Tree DNA has, Remesis the third underneath. So I'm just saying. Wow. Wow. If you if y'all want to read this, I know we don't. Yeah, you you probably want to go, brother Garfield. But I mean, this is something definitely I highly issue, recommend. But the issue is, this goes back forty nine thousand years ago. There's no Israel. There's no Egypt. There's none of that. Correct. So been all over. So him, even if it's true that it's E one B one A, it don't necessarily mean because of him being a part of West Africa or anything like that. You know, we just want to be connected to people, man. Relax. Russell, like, mm -hmm. that's 2,000 years ago. That ain't you, bro. Yeah, and it tells you right here, before 2008, this common ancestor between E-M2 and E-M35 was known as E-3-P2. In 2008, Carafet et al. published the paper New Binary Polymorphisms Reshape and Increase Resolution of the Human Y Chromosomal have a group tree, which updated the YCC, Y chromosome uh, consortium tree with additional refinement. What used to be the E3-P2 branch was split into two branches that became known as E1B-P177 and E1B1-P2. So once again, and that's when, um, 
NevGen's calculator was created in what, 2005 I read earlier? I think it was 2005. Yeah, 2005. So that was three years afterwards. Well, yeah. Great show. Yeah. And if anybody has any um, questions, you can find my email on my um, on my YouTube channel. Plug your YouTube channel so they can see. Okay. Let me stop sharing. I feel like we should have went in deep on this breakdown YSTRs, like what's the purpose of the difference between autosomal chromosomes and sex chromosomes? <laughs> Present. There we go. Yeah, for some reason it's giving me problems. It's not letting me do it. Yeah. Well, just tell them what it finds you, and then we're in the show. Yeah, biblical underscore DNA. Give me one second. It's probably work. I'm going to bring it back up real quick. Um, I'm going to show where people can find those email responses from Dr. Gad, too, on my community. Yeah, for some reason, it locked up. That's weird. All right, I'm sharing. All right, so that's the, the emails right here. And these are some great sources that I have. Um, the y Fool, the Ancient DNA, the Ancient Human DNA, um, Periods in Israel for those that don't know the chronology of Israel. That's very important. And I want to share these emails because I know in Gozi wanted me to go over them. Um, the um the sources that he talked about is going to be in the section when the video is um finished. You're going to see all of it. All right. You received the emails that the the links I sent you. Yes, all the links are in the in the chat. You're going to okay. see that, um, grab my daughter's book and then below that sources from biblical DNA. Okay. Grab that um, book, the poetry book from Garfield's daughter. Well, you, you're about to, Rob, you're about to jump on? If you're about to jump on, I got you, bro. Mm. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you, did, um, were you able to find out if the, uh, the motor that belongs to E1B1A? I don't even want to talk about that. Oh, Maybe. no. You, you're gonna be, you're gonna make a whole video. I'm gonna, let's wait till the video come out. <laughs> no, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna make no video. I mean, it is no, what it is. I've, I've already seen his family tree DNA I, results. I like, I like, I like the motor man. He just gotta make up his mind. That's but I've seen his. He's E one B one. What? He's just E one B one. If you ask me, you, that's that's just what he is. We not gonna specify which one. No, that's not what Family Tree DNA gets for him. <laughs> okay, whatever. All right, all right. Anyway, let's get to the Egypt for a minute. Hey, what up? What up, Cuba? All right, jump on um Rob on. Let me put the link in the chat. I don't know where the post went to, but whatever. It's Rob somewhere down here. Get it in right now. There we go. All right. 
All right, let me get these links for Rob on right now because he's about to start some trouble. What, trouble. What's the name of that post? Um, biblical, so for anyone, Rob that on real know. name is Troublemaker. Okay, that so it's for a bad story. Um, this guy he, he's upset with the whole Ramsey's the third not belonging to E1B1A. Um, he just he just keeps on coming at me and it's for no reason but because i'm just i'm trying to be as truthful as possible like that's the reason why i actually took the time to email um how dr howis and dr gad to find out the truth about all of this you know and so when gad said that you know they're going to be revisiting those old samples that's all i needed to hear that that proves to me that you know hey they understand that back in 2012 what they had available um really wasn't the best like it, w it was brand new it was it wasn't good the bioinformatics wasn't good at that time but he says dear colleague thanks for your email the analysis was done in 2011 2012 before the article publication in 2012, the quoted Hadwell group designation in later articles was related to the earlier reference article of 2012. So there was no confirmation um, with the E1B1A. That was just predicted based off of the 2011-2012 article. Now our lab has moved to, to the NGS, which is next generation sequencing analysis, instead of the targeted analysis that was the only method available in the pre-NGS error and we are revisiting the previous study mummies thanks for your concern and he uh reiterates the same thing here thank thank you for your email the work that you refer to bmj haram conspiracy article has been carried out more than 10 years ago while we use targeted str analysis for kinship analysis the field has moved past this now and is setting NGS as a standard platform for analysis of ancient DNA and giving ample information with more coverage on sequence variations that can be utilized for more def de um, definitive genotype designation. We have recently procured a NGS platform. We recently, you see that? We recently procured an NGS platform in our lab and we have been starting to study new mummies as well as revisiting the old ones too. Also, in two, uh, 2010 and 2011, the information about the autosomal genotyping in various populations was rather, rather scarce. I attached the, uh, yeah. And that's you know the reason what? why you they didn't dagged, do that. You just, daggered, you just daggered the whole thing, bro. That ain't from Hawass, my brother. That's from that's from um God, Yahia God, Z God. Mm -hmm. That's not yeah. from Hawass, S S K B O S D. But hold on, you trust Hawass with E one B one A? Hold on a second. Yeah. Everybody stop. S K B O S D. I'm gonna put you on the big screen right now. Do you don't trust Hawass? So you don't trust E one B one A with Ramesses the third then? Because he's the one that found that shit. So be careful what you're saying. And you're laughing. <laughs> Laugh at yourself. <laughs> Yo, Mr. 707, yo, you the best, yo. He said, they made us Egyptians so we wouldn't think we was Israelites. Oh, my God, I'm done. Lock him. Lock him. Come on, Rob, on, because I got to get out of here. All right. Dear colleague, I have read the article that you were referring to in FSI, Jeanette, 2017, which is another article. Um, If I didn't give it to Garfield, I will make sure to give it to him. Yes, you did. The yes, study you did. Yes, you did. Okay. Okay, sounds good. The main point from our previous work that was done and published in 2012 was to assess the kinship between the study pair, and we proved it using the autosomal and the Y crow, uh, crow SDR profiles. The Hadwell group designation is a is a byproduct, which we just referred to in view of completion then. But it is understandable that the markers for genotyping in various ethnicities over a wide span of time needs more detailed and um, integrative analysis like the WGS NGS analysis. Thanks. So that's it.
Yo, yo. What's going on, Raborn? Raborn in the building. What's up? That, that's a killer in the building. What up, man? This shit is crazy, man. For those who have been following my little Facebook post, because I just started going back on Facebook, I'm running an experiment. I'm running an experiment, and it's going lovely. I had to block some people. I lost some friends in the process. And um, I asked a question. And let's listen to the question. Yoruba, Mandy, Akan people, Bambara, origins in ancient Egypt. And if they are origins in ancient Egypt, does that make African Americans the descendants of Egypt? Oh my God. Oh my God! I have we have been told on on the, on you know who channel. Nobody teaches that. We don't say that. We just like the African culture, and we like that African spirituality. Bullshit! I have over fifty messages in my experiment from all of these people coming with their hermetic hypothesis. Are you trying to say the Africans are lying when they say they came from Egypt? Are you trying to say that Africans are lying when they came from here? And blah, 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 blah. And I, brother, where'd you get this from? I got it from Ashwa Crazy. I got it from Jabari. I got it from Shaka. I got it from this person. I got it from that. And they all tell you where they get it from. So now, but since my, uh, uh, my, my little experiment is in conclusion, you guys can't say this no more. You are saying this because you think you are an ancient Egyptian. You think that you have a connection to these people. You are no different than the Hebrew Israelites. I, it, the messages are astonishing. Just look at the names. You see the word Amun there. You see similar things to Hotep. They, one brother told me, look at the Congo and look at the, oh, look at the Akan and the concept of the Nataro. What? <laughs> what, 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 what are you talking about? Well, how has that got anything to do with this at all? That, yo. This shit is crazy. Then one nigga told me Shango come from there. I couldn't believe this. This is unbelievable. And I and I tried not to debate them. I just wanted to know like where you getting this shit from. That's all I want to know. Where who taught you this? Where did you learn this from? Where are you getting this from? And now we see that majority of these people is saying this madness, bro. It's crazy. Look at that. Thank you, brother. What'd it say? Put it back up. You flashed it up there. It went away. Thank you, brother. I personally have zero doubts that the Akan people were in Upper Egypt. I am familiar with excerpts from Muhammad Bello's writing on Africa, but this guy sums up the migration and formation of Sangha and Wagadu nicely. Now, years and years ago, you heard us talk about this Muhammad Bello fellow. And we talked to you about the hermetic hypothesis and what happens during colonization and how the African educated class take over and begin to identify with this to kind of erase this. They don't have a history type of thing. And it's interesting because you see that there are Africans participating in that after colonization. You see there are Africans participating in that before the European, which is then with your Arab individuals. And the whole Muhammad Bello, Lama Du, and all of that has all been debunked. They, this guy, always telling you that the word uh, uh, Yoruba comes from Yaru, and they come from the Yemen. See what they say. So, like, you know, and then I have another individual who tried to FaceTime me at 2 a.m. in the morning while he's sitting on his couch in the dark. Like, I want to talk to a nigga at 2 o'clock in the morning on a FaceTime. What the fuck are you doing, bro? You know what I'm saying? And then he's like, oh, the, 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 the DNA of the African American is in uh, the Now Valley. And I'm like, okay, so what is this DNA? What are, you, what are you talking about? What are you speaking upon? And it gets crazy. It gets wild. Look at this. Look on the screen. You will no longer tell me that this is not what these Egyptian maniacs are teaching. I asked them, where do you get this from? You saw the last video Garfield did. 
they said he got it. You're not arguing against Jabari. You're arguing against actual history. Look at this shit. Cultural continuity. Yoruba, Egypt. The Vena Nations culture. No date. No providence. Don't know what this shit is they got on the screen. They're no different from Hebrew Israelites. You find connections there. The, the, the Hebrews say, oh, he want B1A is in the Levant. Oh, fuck it. We the Hebrews. E1 B1 A's and Ramesses. Oh, fuck it. All of us are niggas, but you don't have no E1 B1 A nowhere else in that motherfucker. You got your R's and all that other stuff over there. This is unbelievable. Look what it says. The Akans came from Mesopotamia and settled in Egypt. The various dynasties may represent different groups that became pharaohs. The God people of Ghana came from Canaan. And settled in Ethiopia for a long time before they moved to Ifi Ifi in Nigeria. Finally, they settled in Ghana. Yo, you can't make this up, yo. You can't make this up. You can't. My, my test is impeccable. <laughs> you dudes will no longer lie to us. You, you hate Egypt, bro, boy. You guys are anti-black. Nobody said that no migrations never happened before. No one never said that. Where'd you get that from? No one said trade wasn't going on. We didn't get, where'd you get that from? What that say right there? No, Egyptians, somebody, oh, somebody's beating them up. We were taken from, okay. My people are the Balanta, located in Senegal today. The Balanta migrated to West Africa from the Nile Valley around 2,000 years ago. This is what the Egypt told me. Anybody with an ark on their head, Beware of the unk. Beware of the fucking unk, bro. These dudes is rewriting history. But they have a president for this information. And this is something that we got to, I got to do a future presentation on. Because we're going to have to go through trial by trial because it's too much. But I'm going to send you something, Garfield. Check this out. Put this up on there. You don't want to go through all of these first? Yeah, yeah, we can go through them. What's that one? What that say? I like the way you read. What that say? Um, Kufu, Akufu, Tutanakam, Tutu, Ankuma, Menkare, Manukure, Amun, Amon. Yeah, man, he, he went to Asari Motep School. That's where he went to. Thank you, brother. I personally have zero doubts that the Akan people were in Upper Egypt. I'm familiar. Okay, I think we read this already. The one with um, and then you have this one. This is not this is about this is the craziest one. Black American discovers he's a direct descendant of Egyptian pharaoh. Wow. Then you have this. Yes, my ancestors were full of people who are are migrant people from East to West Africa. Even the Dogon of Mali are descendants of the ancient Kemetic people. Yes, they are. It is clear evidence of it in their religious practices and culture. The American centric point of view is unhelpful. All Africans transported to the Americas are descended from empires in Africa, including Kemet and Egypt. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's crazy. You will no longer say this because I'm gonna put all I'm gonna compile all these shits together and I'm gonna put the teacher's face next to all of their goddamn names that they name it. These are only a couple of them. It's too much stuff to here to put up here today. It's too much, but I'm gonna put their names to the claim. And if you claim you don't teach that, how in the universe in the world did these people come up with this information? But anyway, Garfield, you see what I just put you put that up there, man. Yeah, I'm gonna put it up here right now. I got you. And we're gonna do a this is a oral tradition of Ghana that is recorded in the 70s. So when you look from the 19th to 20th century, you'll see that a lot of these things are being recorded. But um, you can start right on the second paragraph. What does that say? Because the excerpts from the 1977 text presented here are divided into separated numbered chapters and come from two different sources, the line numbers do not follow sequentially. But the shift from the first narrator to the second will be indicated below. Diara Silla first tells his listeners about Dinga Kore, ancestor of the descendants of the Ghana Empire. In this version, they came from India via Yemen and Israel 
to an unidentified place in Africa, approximately a thousand miles east of present day Mauritania. Toward the end of his life, Dinga left a message for a vulture to convey to his descendants. You ain't gotta be the rest. You ain't gotta be the rest. That's just going into the story. But mm -hmm. now, if I'm a person doing research and I'm looking up oral traditions of Ghana and I'm trying to find this and I see this guy, this Dinga character, I'm gonna try to find out where is this at? So when we look for this, we say, oh, the Wagadu cycle. We want to know what is Wagadu. Then we find out, oh, okay, this is ancient Ghana, not the present Ghana that we have now, but this is the empire that is close to around this Mauritania, this Northwestern period, right? And then those people we know are the Bandi people, right? We know that they're the Siniki people. We know that those people are in 1600 BCE, 1600 BCE, they're in this southern uh, uh, Mauritania, and they build this this stone wall city called uh, Dar Tichy. And we don't have writing about this. There's no writing. I I, I, won't, I don't know why the Egyptians don't write about this shit. But um, yeah, and they call this one of the enigmas of Africa, this area, because of the agriculture and the things that they're doing there. But because the sub-Saharan Africa is the enemy of every single person, the archaeology is slow so now if i'm a hebrew israelite and i find this oral tradition i can say that the ghana people came from israel i could give you another oral tradition or something that said that they come from egypt i could keep doing this and go down the line and keep going and then the question would be are you trying to say that these african people are liars this motherfucker and, and oh and by the way they say this nigga's a light-skinned white boy Sorry to say that too. They, they got one calling them a white man, which is crazy. But when you read these things, you can see how they're changing and how they're adding on, etc. etc. So, this same thing that you see here is something that Wesley Muhammad did. He looked at the Hermetic Hypothesis, which is written by Robin Law. He looked at it and he's describing all of these traditions that you're reading right now. And he decided to pick and choose. The Yoruba telling them that they Canaanites. These people telling you that they came from Egypt. And he didn't read the conclusion of all of this or how this even came about. He just skipped all of that. So if I'm a person that's a Hebrew or a Moor or anybody else, I can look at that and run with it and be like, yeah, this is what it is. So, you know, this is just a brief little summary here. But what is the Hermetic Hypothesis? That's dealing with the Bible. You know, that's dealing with Noah and his three sons, right? We know that that's not originally in the Bible, how they frame it to make black people a curse of God, etc. But at this specific time, when it's being written, they're saying that the Egyptians are light-skinned Libyans. Light-skinned Libyans. Hamites. Light-skinned Hamite niggas. That migrated from their cities, parts of West Africa that these Europeans or people are discovering. And they have to say this because they can't understand that the Sub-Saharan has a sophisticated culture. Wherever there is a sophisticated culture in the Congo or whatever, it had to come from somewhere else. But Rob Warren, are you trying to say that the Akan and the Europa just came out of the ground and it was always there? No, no one's saying that. We have archaeology in the Igbo land talking about we got bones and shit from 11,000 B.C. We got domestication and all type of stuff over there. So, so it, it's a bunch of things going on. With this part of the Hermetic Hypothesis that's being written, that's the, the basis of it. Wherever there is a civilization or sophistication, it had to come from an outside source. It either it came from the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians gave them iron. It came from the light-skinned Egyptians. So now that shit started changing now because, hold on, these Egyptians ain't white people. They fucked out they ain't white people. They can't run that shit. So the scholars had to throw that shit in the garbage. Like, all right, all right, the niggas black. All right, fuck it. Yeah, we not going, we not going. We, we, we can't say that. But these West African people over here, they still got their civilization from these people. They can't do that shit on their own. Uh, 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 uh. So now, prior to this time, you have... Arab corpus. If you want to study West African history, I'm sorry, you gotta go there. Because this is the written record that we have. When you look at these things, and you look at they talking about Ghana, 
and they have different names in Arabic for it, they'll tell you that there were 21 kings before the present person who becomes Islamic or whatever, whatever may happen. And they call them pagan. And they call them these specific names. And then later on, these people began to write new histories of their people. Now it's not Egypt, there's Mecca. These niggas come from Mecca. This is the son and the cousin of Muhammad. And this nigga is this and this, that, and the third, and all of this shit is going down. And now these become local traditions amongst these people because of the politics and the power that's around these people. The third version of the Hermetic about weekly that comes into play when you have the decolonization of Africa. So you have people such as Samuel Johnson, who writes his book on the Yoruba. And he says, no, when you see this stuff that says that we come from the East and Islam, it should be taken metaphysical, but niggas came from Egypt. And you're like, okay, why are you saying this? Because now you are understanding in this time, they are saying that the Egyptians are black people. They're Africans. They're not white Libyans. They're not that, they that. And this is a great civilization, and we tying ourselves to the niggas. Then you'll have people like Lucas comes with the religion of the Yorobas and playing linguistic gymnastics and this name means this and this comes from the sheep and the ba is this and this is that and these niggas got their religion from there. So when you look at Western and Central African cultures and their places of where they at, those cultures of what we call spiritualism is the base and the foundation of their science, their medical practices, their judicial systems, their education systems which are becoming uh, initiation rights, if we look at the Sandy and the Paro, this is for the men, this is for the women, that is the basis of their whole society. So, when you say this, you take the agency away from them people. Now, there's new evidence out that I sent to Garfield, and um, this looks at the trans saharan trade before Islam, before, we talking BCE shit, was there trade going along? If there was, what were the materials trading? Do we have evidence of trade? Yep. But we'll bring that out at a later date. I just wanted to drop this little clip so you know what's coming. What, what, what's coming? We banging on the Egyptomaniacs. It's Egyptomaniac summer. It's gonna be a hot summer. We taking. I'm taking all debates. Any one of you niggas want to come up here and build and tell me that any of these tribes originate from Egypt and you bring your oral traditions, please bring them. I want you to. This is a good learning process for the people because when I first started studying this, it, it's sad that I was studying this to debunk Hebrew Israelites because I wanted to know where they getting this from, why they keep saying that these people got this, like how is the Arab people saying that they Israelites? And I look Oh, they do say it, but they say it when the British and these people was over there. And I'm like, oh, shit. And they basically trading slaves, using their spiritual system to enslave people. But that's another story. Then they wind up flipping. So I'm just like, damn. But while I'm reading this stuff, I started to see all of this other stuff. And I'm like, damn, why? What's up with this? Well, maybe we the Egyptians, bro. They keep saying this shit. To tell me all these people got this shit in their thing. And the Abrahamic faith is at the root of the model prior to the European. The Abrahamic faith has fucked up our own. So now we have DNA and we have archaeology. We have certain books written about Ghana. They found the cave that they're talking about in Wagadu, which he was about to he's about to be with the serpent. They claim that we are uh, was sacrificing virgins to these specific people, chopping their heads off and all that. They didn't find no bodies there, so I don't you can't say if that is true or not. But they found them serpent heads that they began with. But to this day they really don't know what the ancient religion of Wagadu was. We don't know what it was. We just know that serpent was there. And I'll stop right there, man. We gonna go ham on these niggas. Yeah, this is what I was telling you about with Fekri Asan. When he wrote about 4700 BC, presumably much earlier in the Eastern Sahara, clearly predates the construction of Egyptian 
mastabas and pyramids by a very long time. Such structures might have been the precursors of Egyptian pyramids and monumental architecture. This was around 4700 BC. And then when you look at the first emergence of ceramic production in Africa, you look at the Onjugu in Mali, and the Africa, and they found the same type of pottery materials in Egypt, pre-dynastic Egypt. The watermelon seeds found in King Tut's, um, what do you call it? They talk about um, stuff that we used to do in, in um, West Africa. Iron smelting predates the Levant and Egypt in Niger, West Africa. And of course, um, hold on, let me get back to this right here. Uh, I was gonna go to this. Oh, what is that? Oh, oh, this is the this is the slides you got here. They got mummification in Yoruba land. They put cloth on the bodies of the you know of the Yoruba people. So that means that it's a form of mummification that came in Egypt. You heard? What time? What time period was that? The the Yoruba is the AD time period. This is what we had. They wrapped their bodies in this uh these cloths so that's symbolic to mummification so therefore it comes from egypt the egyptians yeah well this is before egypt mummification here in libya and they and they had they had um what do you call it they had um ostrich eggshell necklace around the neck so you're talking about um protecting the body or protecting them while you're dying in the afterlife protection in the afterlife so you have you have um grave goods so this is stuff that you continue to find in Israel. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go even deeper when you get to do it. In Algeria, they have the tradition of um, the Hathar tradition 8,000 years ago in Algeria on the walls. So there's a lot of, lot of stuff that they see culturally the people were doing that's brought in the Kemet. I always tell people this. Kemet is like America. They don't come up with anything, but everything is done in the country. So that everybody wanted to go to the Nile River because of the drying up of the of course, the, the, the desert era dried up. So everybody had to migrate. The animals and everybody had to migrate to an era where water was. So the Nile River in the middle, I think I was reading that article you told me to read. I read like five pages. They talk about the middle part in like in Nubia, like the top of Nubia or whatever, that the people would migrate near the river, right, that area. So you see people coming from the West area or even the Trans-Saharan area and coming all the way over to Egypt because of the Nile River. It's just facts. And they've been doing it for years. Not no 10 million people and no 20 million people. We're talking about a small amount of people traveling just to survive. And that's what they're doing. So they had people who was, I mean, and if you look into um, even dying and rising deities, you go back to plant growing deities and you go back to agriculture. Agriculture never started in ancient Egypt. But you see ancient Egypt doing agriculture. Does that mean that ancient Egypt stole agriculture? It's stupid. That type of mindset is just dumb. The afterlife, grave goods. That's in. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go. Y'all, y'all keep talking. Alrighty. Yeah, I just say God goes for this show. That's what the brother in the in the in the chat was talking about. The um, what he said. The why could do bitter myth is an allegory. Yeah, it's an allegory, but it's based off of ritual and things they were really doing. And when he come back, you'll see the artifacts of the actual cave and this place that the archaeological evidence provides. So yeah, man. So what do you think about this stuff, Fortune? You there, Fortune? Mic check? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, so what you got? Yeah, Garfield gone. I don't know if that was his Uber down there or yeah, a sad piece. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know, bro. So, so what do you think about this stuff? I just feel like just kicking him in the head right now. Why do you talk so much shit on a daily basis, Fortune? Oh, man. Man. Who's this guy? This is why I saw another band job. He ain't banned me. I left. But watch this, though. You can ban you. And it can happen in three seconds. How about that? You niggas are crazy, bro. We ain't talking about him, bro. We're talking about crypto maniacs. But yeah, uh, see what I just sent you, uh, Garfield? Yeah, I caught it. Hold on one second. Let me, let me close out this stuff right here that I got right here. Let me close out this stuff. Yeah, let's see. Let's save this one. This is this is good. Save this. Let's save this. Hold on. 
Yeah, let's save it for a real presentation. Yeah, let's save it. Let's save it. I'm gonna save it for a real presentation, man. Gypto mania is going wild, bro. That shit crazy, bro. You can't make this shit up. You cannot make this up, man. So, what do you think is the conclusion to all of this stuff, Garfield? The conclusion is that you're gonna have people migrating. Oh, you read? You said you read five. Um, you, you five read of the five. pages. I didn't, I didn't read the whole thing. I didn't read the whole thing. Yeah, that shit is crazy. And that, and these are kind of difficult reads because it's like, it's real. Like, I don't know. It's kind of dry, you heard? So you gotta mm -hmm. really be into the mood to sit there and do that. But that's the new evidence, bro. And if you come with that, then now we can have a different conversation, bro. But if you ain't coming with that, bro, what are we talking about? Yeah, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. I don't know, man. How y'all doing down there, man? Y'all still want to say that your teachers don't teach people that they the ancient Egyptians? You don't see how if you say that all of these people come from here, you those people, bro? You're no different than the Hebrew Israelite. Kwame Matra Nami Mentu Hotep says Pan African encompasses Africa, not just West Africa. We know that, brother. Why would you say that? That's from a Pan African perspective, but they didn't have a Pan African perspective when it came to Egypt. Egypt never said we're all of Africa. We are doing that in a modern day time period. Egypt was always on its own. It never said Ethiopia is a part of me or Nubia is a part of me. Why did they treat the Nubians the way they did between 1500 and 1000 BC? Why do you think the Nubians rose up and took over Egypt? You think they, th they did it because, oh, I love them so much? Yep, thank you, Africa, Africa, Africa. Uh, You, where everybody at? You. Yo. All right, I'm going to get out of here, man. Y'all ain't saying nothing, man. I was talking to myself, man. What the fuck? Oh, you was on mute? Yeah, I just said you something. Oh, you <laughs> was all right, then. Peace and love, y'all. You got it? This, this show. We're, we're over um, Amir's bedtime. Hold on. Let me see what you're talking about. Yeah, we'll be with that. We'll be with that next week, Monday. All right? Peace and love, man, family. I got to get out of here. Oh, man. I got to put I up here. I came late, man. Sorry, guys. No, nah, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about that, bro. It's all good, man. Enjoy your company.
Yeah, man. Enjoy your company, man. You're good to go, man. Yeah, man. <clears throat> hey, hey, Kwame, a good name is better than gold, right? So, hey, any name that you have, you live and you go by your name. So, I'm going to call you Kwame. You want to be Kwame Mayat Ra? I saw you, brother. I call you Kwame. It means Saturday Day Born. Saturday Day Born. All right. So, peace and love, family. We out of here. Peace. Peace.